This broadcast is copywritten by the Sagu Sports Network for the private use of our audience. Any other use of the broadcast or any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the Sagu Sports Network consent is prohibited. Welcome to the Sagu Sports Network. We are live from beautiful Waxahachie, Texas at Lumpkin Stadium for another college football Saturday. I'm Adam Ferguson, joined by my partner, as always, Tim Roberts, and a special guest today, Joey McWilliams with the MidwestSports.net. How are you guys doing today? Doing good. Hanging in there. A little bit toasty today, little but bit. I mean, when you, when you plan football games in September in Texas, you just got to be ready for that. And we got a good one on tap today. Yes, we do. Today we have the Millsaps Majors going on the road from Mississippi here to Waxahachie to face your hometown Sagu Lions and what should be an exciting Sooner Athletic Conference matchup uh, here today uh, for Sagu, of course, Millsaps out of conference game here for today here for the Lions. But let's talk a little bit about big picture stuff here. Let's talk about the NAIA. We have one of our vast wealths of knowledge here, Joey McWilliams, who, who knows all about the NAIA. Let's start with the top 25, Joey. Uh, a little bit of shakeups. It's a little different. The, the voting is done every, uh, every two weeks as opposed to every week. So there was some, a, a lot of movement here after the past two weeks of action. Walk us a little bit through the top 25 and how it looks at this point in time, Joey. Well, I think obviously you have to start with Lindsey Wilson. And, and I don't know. I, I kind of like the every week voting. I'm, I may not be a fan necessarily of, of the biweekly voting because I like to see the changes. It's fun as a fan. And, you know, sometimes when you when you cover all of these teams so much, I think you lose a little bit of the fandom. You, you get caught up in all the numbers. So I just like being a fan every now and again and watch them go up and down. But you have to start with Lindsey Wilson. And that's just the way to go. A big victory uh, last week over Kaiser, a top five matchup right there, holding Kaiser to just two points. And when, when the preseason poll came out, and I was looking at the top two or three, obviously Morningside's going to be in the hunt. I thought Northwestern might be, possibly, uh, you know, could be thought of as the top team in the country. But my question was, is Cameron Dukes coming back? Is he going to play again for Lindsey Wilson? When I got my answer that Cameron Dukes was coming back, there was my answer for the number one team in the country. It has to be the Blue Raiders coming off a spectacular season last year. And they're not, they're not giving up anything right now. Well, there you go. We always like to talk about uh, our Sooner Athletic Conference ties to the top 25. And currently, Sooner Athletic Conference has two teams inside the top 25. The, the highest ranking team is, of course, Ottawa, uh, who jumped from 23 to 18 after the last two weeks of action. They've started the season undefeated, have really looked like a juggernaut on offense. Wouldn't you say, Tim, from what uh, yeah. we saw last week? Yeah, last week, and we obviously the week before, putting up uh, 62 points. And then last week, that first half, doing a great job here in Waxahachie, and then finished it off towards the end. They're looking really solid and they've definitely earned that top 16 spot they just oh, got to keep you just got to keep climbing at this point to create a little bit of safety when you start looking towards the end of the year absolutely and, and now uh, i want to get your opinion here joey last week we talked to, to vince delasio and he said that the the difference in that top 10 as opposed to an ottawa who's creeping now closer and closer to the top 15 is just vastly different in terms of competitiveness well, I think he's right, and and I always enjoy listening to Vince. I think he has a he has a great take on on a lot of things. There is a gap there, and and part of the reason is the you know the the competitive level. Obviously, you're seeing between you know the top four or five teams. You get a morning side, like we said, a Northwestern, a Lindsey Wilson, a, a a Grandview up there, and a couple more along the way. I think Ottawa can be playing on that level. I think they wow. had just a little bit of a hiccup last year, but again, the problem is the perspective. It, it's the the overall viewpoint of the Sooner Athletic Conference and what is the level of play within the conference. Now, I'm based out of Southern Oklahoma. I'm right here. I mean, Sooner's in the name, okay? So <laughs> I'm right here in the footprint and have watched these teams since they were Central States Football League teams and, yep. and a number of them. And now the conference is growing, which, by the way, I think it's fantastic that there are now 10 football teams in the conference with the addition of Louisiana College. But the overall play of the conference has to go up for Ottawa to get the respect that it really does deserve. And, and you know, you guys saw them last week. They're a oh, quality yeah. team. Absolutely. It may not be this year, but keep an eye on Ottawa. They just seem like a program that's built to last. Now, of course, the other team in the Student Athletic Conference uh, did drop from 15 to 22. That is Arizona Christian. They are still a good program, but they lost to unranked Texas Wesleyan last week, Tim. Unranked Texas Wesleyan, but a te Texas Wesleyan that's now receiving votes. They're just outside the top 25. Yes, they are. We've been saying for three years now, it is inevitable that Texas Wesleyan will become a competitive force, if not a, a top contender in this conference, if not the top dog. 
They, we'll talk about it in a second. They've got a chance to take that over this weekend, Absolutely. potentially. Yes. And it's just inevitable. That's a school that is, I mean, they're national champions in ping pong. Texas Wesleyan <laughs> is going to find a way to be competitive in every single sport, and they've been earning it all the way up there. Got a huge win against Arizona Christian. Arizona Christian now is on the verge. They're going to have some big matchups coming up against yep. Ottawa, Arizona that yep. might not knock them out of the top 25 entirely. So definitely in the danger zone for Arizona Christian. Now, before we move on to some of the Student Athletic Conference matchups, Joey, give us your, your game of the week in the NAIA. We talked a little bit about it before, but I want to hear uh, what you're looking forward to today. All right. Well, uh, by the way, Tim, I agree with you. I think that it, it is only a matter of time. And, and oh, I yeah. think you've made a valid point on that. They, they, they have a, a great program there at Texas Wesleyan. Yeah. I would say the biggest game of the week is it's a top 25 game. It's a KCAC game. Again, right here in the Midwest, Kansas Wesleyan, you were talking about them moving up in the rankings. Kansas Wesleyan taking on Bethel College, a huge matchup. Kansas Wesleyan has been right there on the cusp, making it to the semifinals a couple of years back. Myers Hendrickson does a fantastic job with the Coyotes. But this Bethel program is the real deal. They're a solid program, and it's one of those things, too. Bethel coming in at number 10 in the country right now, they have a fantastic offense. It's that flex bone, triple option, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> it's going to put points on the board. Back-to-back -back games last year, they scored 78-plus points. 78 plus points in back-to-back -back games. And you have to think, okay, what is going on here? The only person they lose from that team last year is Zach Esau. They're bringing in more and more players that are coming back, and, and it's a great team. But the defense is well. Through two games, they've given up three points. So this is just a team that is it's so tough to match up against. And by the way, one of the other things, you, you go up against that offense, having just four days, five days to oh, prepare for that yep. this far into the schedule – Yep. It's, it's just not enough. And, and I think though Kansas Wesleyan will probably play a solid game today. I'm Bethel, they're, they're the real deal. Absolutely. And, and I think some teams aspire to score 156 points on the season <laughs> as opposed to in, in, in two games. So that, to me, just blows my mind. That's crazy. Let's move on to some of the Student Athletic Conference action here. Now, uh, Joey, we like to do something where it's, it's Tim and Adam versus our guests in terms of the predictions. But right now, it's more Adam versus everybody. Because <laughs> last week, 5-0 and on my end with picks. Tim, of course, 3-2. and Vince went 5-0. and So he's given you a strong start. So I'm going to go into the first matchup here in the Student Athletic Conference. We'll talk about it. Louisiana College going on the road to number 22, Arizona Christian. I've got Arizona Christian. I don't think that's really that far-fetched. Tim, how about you? Yeah, Arizona Christian looking for a bounce-back game. Louisiana College, you've seen them. They're struggling out of the gate, uh, you know, here in their first year in the Sooner. Uh, definitely picking Arizona Christian today. Absolutely. Joey? Well, I think Tim just set the bar maybe too high. I don't know. I hope I can live up to that. Uh, you know, anyway, uh, the the uh, Arizona Christian, they get the loss out of their system. Aiden Quinn, who is the all-time leading rusher at Arizona Christian, six yards shy of 2,000 for his career mark. He gets that today and a lot more. The Wildcats on defense, uh, they have a decent rushing defense when they're not playing, you know, Division One opponents, but th there's, there's no way that they're going to be able to hold Arizona Christian out of the end zone today. I, I, definitely the firestorm. And, of course, Louisiana College coming after a tough loss to Abilene Christian, which, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's Abilene Christian's tune-up game before they get tuned up by a Division I team. So, yeah. tough, tough start to the season for Louisiana, Louisiana College. Moving on to the next one, kind of your backyard here, Joey. Langston going on the road to Wayland Baptist. I've got Langston in this game. Now, I know, I think we're going to disagree here, but, Joey, I want to I defer to you first. In this game, who do you have? Oh, okay, well... I, I don't know which one you're going to take, guys. I'm, gonna, I'm going definitely Langston on this one. Had an opportunity to see the Lions play on site last week uh, with Midwest Sports Saturday and the show up there in Langston, and they, they look good. The offense is still evolving, and that's the thing. Raekwon Washington had four touchdown passes against a, a Texas college defense that is struggling, to say the least, and I'm probably being kind with struggling. <laughs> but that was the second quarterback yeah. in back-to-back -back weeks after Larry Harrington had a good outing. He went down. Washington really is stepping it up. And the thing about Langston, too, Coach Quentin Morgan now, he, he is a defensive guy. This defense is giving up now just 13 points through two games. Again, I don't see Wayland Baptist scoring against the Langston offense. And if they're solid, they're going to come through with another victory today. I think they stay undefeated. Absolutely. Tim, you, this morning you flipped the coin. Which one did it land on? You know, I'm <laughs> going to go for the upset. I, I've kind of, you know, we've, we're used to Langston being, you know, the CSFL at perennial right. champion, the yeah. Sooner perennial champion. They've slipped a little bit. Uh, I'm not quite seeing the same level 
of Dominus as before, and Wayland is just such a tough place to go into. It's like you have to drive, keep driving till you get to nowhere, <laughs> then you get out into a field and you play football. It's always going to be a tough game. If anything, that is what's put me over the top with picking Wayland for the upset is just that home field advantage. Plus, you know I got to go with an upset every week. At some point, I just got to gotta roll the dice a little bit. You're one of those uh, guys. But, you know, I'm, I'm picking <laughs> Wayland for the upset over Langston. Real quickly, last two matchups. We'll start with Texas Wesleyan going on the road to face Ottawa, who we saw here last week. I'm going Ottawa. Tim, who do you have in that matchup? Going Ottawa as well, but man, if Texas Wesleyan can pull this off, it's going to be a good game. It's going to be a gut check game for Texas Wesleyan. If they come back to Fort Worth 3-0, and pushing top 25, controlling this conference, yeah, I, th it's a distinct possibility, but I, I think, as you said, Ottawa's looking like a juggernaut. And Joey, how about you on that end? Listen, it, it would be a big win. It would be a big upset as well. I'm not going there. Ottawa, <laughs> let's Austin McCullough, through two games, and I know you guys have seen him through two yep. games, 745 passing yards, nine touchdowns, only one pick, which, by the way, you saw was run back for six we points. We did see, yep. Didn't yep. matter. Too much Austin McCullough. And though the Rams have a <laughs> solid rushing defense, uh, where, where's it going to come up on that passing defense? I don't know yep. if they can keep up with it. I think it's close, but but Ottawa. And then lastly, today's matchup here that we will get to here in just a second. Millsaps, the majors coming to Waxahachie to take on Sagu. I'm going Sagu. I picked against Sagu last week. I played a little bit of the villain, but this week I'm going Lions. Tim, how about you? Going Sagu as well. They've always found a way to match up with D3 teams from this conference very well. Uh, Austin College in the past. Right. So track records, anything to prove. I think Sagu's looking for a good bounce back week. Joey? What is it with you guys in 11 o'clock starts, 12 o'clock starts? You have some kind of ABC ESPN contract, and next week's that way too. So I don't know uh, what, it, what it is that you guys want to do that. You want to be the primetime game and get it out of the way. This is an opportunity for Sagu to show out. They play strong against that D3 team, just like you said, and I'm going to go ahead and take the Lions too. Awesome. So there we have it. We'll, we'll see how these picks shape up for our next broadcast when we come back here to Waxahachie. But Joey, thank you for joining us today. Uh, I want you to go ahead and, and tell us a little bit about what it is you do at MidwestSports.net. We cover small college sports, and I, I'm grateful for the opportunity to get to be with you guys, too. You do a fantastic broadcast. I'll be watching today as I'm driving to Commerce. Midwest Sports Saturday is the flagship show on our YouTube channel, and it is uh, an opportunity to go promote different colleges. Division II and NAI really is where we, we hang our hat, but we watch a lot of football, basketball, and more. It's going to be at Commerce today for a matchup between the A&M Commerce Lions and the defending champion West Florida Argonauts. And my, my coverage starts at 4 o'clock, but please do consider subscribing to the YouTube channel. If you look up Midwest Sports Net, you'll see hopefully my smiling face there. <laughs> and uh, we, we will give you good coverage. We're going to promote. We're going to talk about the positive things just like you guys do. And it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful opportunity. I'm thankful for the chance to get to do it. Awesome, Joey. Well, I appreciate your time. Drive safe down to Commerce. Have a good game. I'm sure we'll be tuning in for that after we get off the air. But for now, don't go anywhere. We're going to be back here in just a couple of minutes with our preview of the Millsaps Majors versus the Sagu Lions right here on the Sagu Sports Network. CU. We are committed to forging relationships centered around faith and finance. Our purpose is to provide financial solutions to help you succeed while we tithe 10% of our annual earnings to ministry and community organizations. Your mercy is never ending. Your kindness never fading. Jesus, you're always with me. You're Michael W. Smith returns in an intimate evening, September 30th, 7 p.m., Southwestern Assemblies of God University in Waxahachie. All your favorite hits and a night of worship. Tickets on sale now at sagu.edu slash mws. Don't miss all your favorite hits and a night of worship with Michael W. Smith live. Welcome back to the Sagu Sports Network. If you're just joining us, we just got off the horn here with Joey McWilliams, and we are excited today for this matchup here in Waxahachie. The Millsaps Majors 0-1-1 coming off a loss to Bellhaven last week. They tried to play spoiler, get it back going here against the Sagu Lions, who are also coming off a tough loss, inner, inner conference loss to, to Ottawa. They uh, fell to 1-1 on the season after that loss last week. Tim, let's start with 
the players. We're going we're gonna to mix it up this week a little bit. We usually talk about keys first, but the keys in this one are a little bit more fun, and I think we wanted to keep it for the end of the pregame. Let's talk about some of the players to watch here. Uh, we're going to start with Segu, and we're going to start with, I mean, you know me. Yeah. I think every time we do one of these, I'm going to talk about the quarterback play. Of course, Jordan Barlow, the senior, the grad student quarterback here for Segu, decided to come back and play for one final season. He got off to a slow start last week, but the Sagu offense as a whole got yeah. off to a slow start last week, but he was able to will that team through a little bit of a balanced rushing attack as well as passing in the second half uh, to make it a one-score game, and we thought it was going to be a blowout. What do you have to say about Barlow's grit from it, last it, week? It, yeah, it, grit, intelligence, and maturity. Uh, coming out, you know, even though a lot of it happened on the ground, coming out down 28-7 at the half, just that maturity to get your team back in. And we saw it in the win week one against Louisiana College. We saw it last week. Just so much maturity. He doesn't let the game get him down. And that's what you want in your quarterback. Plus, he's pretty good at slinging the ball around, too. So. Yes, he is. And he's a, he is a lot of fun to watch. Secondly, uh, we'll talk about his favorite long threat, the home yeah. run hitter. Jamal Long had a touchdown last week, uh, is averaging just almost 20 yards a catch. Yeah. We know what he does. We know what Barlow likes to do with Jamal Long on the other side. He's got three touchdowns in two games. And he's not just a deep threat. He's a post threat, too. Yep. On that touchdown pass, I mean, he can just box anybody out, go up, and grab the ball. He's a strong receiver. He's everything you want in a wide receiver. He really is almost a complete package at wide receiver. And moving on to the last one, we're going to move to the defensive side of the ball. And last week in the first half, if you're a Sagu fan, there were no splash plays mm -hmm. except for one. The pick six, interception return for a touchdown by Kevion Davis. Uh, he is one of the leading tacklers on the team, which you don't necessarily like to see <laughs> from a defensive back, but he has shown the ability to, to make plays, make splash plays, to try to keep his team in the game. And at that point, it was 7 nothing, and Sagu had just missed out on an opportunity to score. And it felt like Otto was going to take the reins and take momentum. And then a pick six right after that that stalled drive, huge, huge play by Davis. Yeah, anytime you can have a defensive player come up big like that, like Davis did, it's going to keep you in games, it's going to flip games, and, you know, so maybe not him this week, it could be somebody else, but yeah, if Davis wants to become the, the ball hawk out there uh, that this team desperately needs on defense, that'd be huge. It's almost never the person that I talk about in pregame, so we'll, <laughs> see what he, we'll see what he does today. Tim, let's go to the other side, the other sideline here for the majors. Yeah, uh, starting off, quarterback Caleb Thompson, it's his first year as the full-time starter, had a, a middle-of-the-road week, obviously. They went down big early on against Bell Haven. He threw for uh, 168 yards and a touchdown. He, you know, needs to step up that game a little yep. bit. Obviously, very tough game against Bellhaven. Uh, needs a higher completion percentage. Only completed around 50% of his passes last week. But going to the second guy, this guy was his primary target. Wide receiver Austin, Austin Russell caught 13 of the 19 completed passes. That's like 68%. Yeah of all passes completed went to Russell. So if you're in the Sagu defense, you know where the ball's going. If you're Austin Russell, they, the spot is going to be a little bit on you today a little bit more. you got to make some moves. you got to fight to get open today. I called him option one, two, and three for this yes. major's offense because there's really no secret about who they're trying to get the ball to. Yeah, you don't really see that anymore. Guys getting 70% no. of catches almost in a no. game. So lastly, we talked about Kevion Davis. <clears throat> well, how about defensive back Jet Coolman? <laughs> Not only does he sound like he's from a 90 Saturday morning kids cartoon <laughs> as a hero, he also had a huge pick six last yes, week that, was, that really kind of helped spark not a full-fledged rally really for uh, the Millsaps majors because they were down so big, yep. but it got them, got some points on the scoreboard. So you're talking about those big splash plays, getting a 73-yard pick six. Yep. If you can pull some of that today, uh, just a freshman too. And oh, yeah. I, I'm sorry, Jet... <laughs> Coolman. <laughs> Tim's going to be in love with that name all That's day. That's awesome. All day. <laughs> so I'm, I'm in for a long one. Don't go anywhere. We're going to talk about the keys of the game here, as well as hearing from head coach Ryan Smith right here on the Sagu Sports Network. Michael W. Smith returns in an intimate evening, September 30th, 7 p.m., Southwestern Assemblies of God University in Waxahachie. Tickets on sale now at sagu.edu slash MWS. You know, okay. versus an in-conference game. Welcome back to the Sagu Sports Network. We're getting ready to jump into the plays, or the, the keys. I'm sorry, I'm still backwards for me. The keys to the game here uh, for both the majors and the Sagu Lions. Being the home team, let's start with Sagu. Uh, you watched it here last week, back-to-back -back home games here for the Lions. Uh, the first thing I have is keeping it balanced. We saw them struggle in the first half uh, last week. 
throw that out the window. It was, it was a bad first half for the offense. The second half, they seemed to figure it out. They, they had a balanced rushing attack. Keaton Dudek, they really leaned heavily on him. Barlow was able to sling it a little bit, got them back into the game with a, a one-score game. They were down 28-7. That in itself is, is almost deflating. A three-score game, got it back to 28-21, and Ottawa just kind of proved to be a little bit too, too high-powered on offense to, to keep up with. And we keep on talking about that first half. Don't forget, that game began with two drives into the red zone that netted you zero yep. points. So a lot of it really is just completing drives, just finding that extra play you need in that big moment. If they converted one of those drives into a touchdown, we would have had a totally different ball game yep. going in. That drive towards the end of the game, you wouldn't have been down two scores just trying to put up one last touchdown. You'd been driving to tie the game. So it, when you do have the opportunities, you have to cash in. The offense can move. They just have to find a way to keep finishing those drives. Absolutely. Moving on to the next, the next key to the game for the Lions. We talked about the player in pregame. We talked about uh, Austin Russell. Yeah. Know who you need to cover. Now, Sagu, again, last week the defense had a, a splash play, a pick six. You know where the majors want to go with the ball in the passing attack. You got to think maybe we'll see a little bit of safety help, or they may just put him on an island. I don't know if you can put a receiver like that on an island who's going to have that many targets. It, it's tough to say. That's kind of what they did last week. Uh, there yeah. was a lot of one-on-one -on -one coverage, and honestly... They did a good job. Yes, they did. There was only one big game-breaking play from Ottawa, and that was on a little crossing pattern yep. to the corner where everybody just kind of got beat. They weren't getting beat over the top. So maybe you can just go one-on-one -on -one with Austin Russell, rely on your whoever your main guy is, whoever the DB covering there is, and that way you can keep your, you know, your safeties back, spying the rest of the field. It'll be interesting to see how they approach it. Do they go with a double team? Are they always spying him? We'll we definitely have our eyes on that throughout the game, how you approach a guy who... 70% of the passes right. last week. Yeah, and Coach Smith last week in his pregame interview did talk about the importance. He did hype up the, the trenches, the offensive and defensive line, but he also made it a point to, to talk about his defensive backs. Now, it was very important in a game like it was last week against Ottawa, who likes to air it out. Uh, and it may be even more important today going up against a Division Three opponent. And then the last key to the game here for Sagu, last week was a rough week in terms of the laundry on the field. A lot of penalties. 11 penalties, 88 yards. You're not going to win many games having 11 penalties, it's just tough to overcome. We've seen that in the past here for Sagu. They, they got to clean it up, Tim. They have to. Yeah, and it, it, the deflating thing is there was all kinds. There was yeah. pre-snap, there were post-snap. You had your regular <laughs> holds here and there. So it's not just like you focus on one thing. Right. It's just kind of everything. You know, Mature up a little bit, always know where you are. There were two pre-snap penalties on kickoffs. Yeah. Two offsides on kickoffs. That's like the last penalty you should ever have. The first play of the game was a five-yard penalty yep. on the Lions. Yep. So you've just got to be more aware of where you are on the field at all times. And then when things get chippy, just walk away. Just walk away. I know you're in the trenches. I know yep. you want to say something. I know you, you want to fight for your brother down there. <laughs> just walk away. You might get the 15 yards if you walk away. You Absolutely. might get those free 15. Yeah, so we, we, I hear you talk about all the time about the penalties that happen during the play. It's going to happen. Yeah. A hold is going to happen. You kind of live with those because it kind of goes both ways. Yeah. But we've seen in the past, I will say, early on in the season, the Sagu team seems to have uh, a little bit more of a, a hothead in mentality in terms of on the field, post-play post shenanigans, if you want to call it that. But they do, they do get right yeah. as the season goes on. Yeah. Just kind of looking for them to get right a little bit sooner than they usually do. Absolutely, absolutely. So we're going to hear from the, the man who's leading the charge today. It's going to be head coach Ryan Smith. He's with our sideline reporter, Jazz Williams. Jazz, down to you. Thanks, Adam. Coach Smith, you're known for having an explosive passing game, but your rushing yards have been stellar this, this season. How does having Keaton Dudick as your running back and his 113 yards per game open up your offensive game plan? Keaton does a really good job for us. He's an explosive back. Him and Busby, uh, we like all of our backs. Uh, Keaton's done a good job. He understands his offense. He understands what we're trying to do. Uh, getting to second level. Last week, we were able to formationally give some variations that gave us some second, third level runs. Really helped us kind of, you know, get into that second level. Balance is what we're seeking, and player touch is what we're predicated on. On, de on the defensive side of the ball, you had a pick six last week, and your leading tacklers are your starting linebackers. What can we expect from Jared Hudgens on the defensive unit for this game? Uh, Coach Hudgens, the entire defensive staff, Coach Smalls, Coach Porner, Coach Battle, they do a great job defensively. Uh, you know, the players got to make plays. So we're just trying to get our guys alignment, assignment sound to make sure that they're ready to make those plays. And we expect our guys to make them. Uh, we expect nothing different today. Thanks, Coach, and good luck today. Back to you, Adam. 
Thank you, Jazz. Thank you, Coach Smith. You heard him. The, the first point he made was balance. We talked about Keaton Dudek. He is the workhorse back for this team, but he does coach and preach balance, does Coach Smith here uh, for the Sagu lines. Let's jump to the other sideline again now here, Tim. What does Millsaps have to do to walk away with a win today? Yeah, so three keys to the game. First key, that sounds so obvious, and it's the most <laughs> obvious thing you're going to ever say, but hold on to the ball. Last week against Bellhaven, they had three first-half turnovers all three led to touchdowns. That's what put them in that pretty much insurmountable hole, but they were down 49 to seven at one point. You, you just can't have right. those kind of mistakes, you know, against anybody, against a Bellhaven, against a Sagu. You've got to hold on to the ball. You've, you've got to find a way, even if you're punting, punting isn't always necessarily the worst thing in the world, <laughs> especially when you're factoring in these turnovers. So hold on to the ball, avoid those big first half mistakes. It's actually interesting, two teams that both got demolished in the first half last week. Both put up some points in the yep. second half. So it'll be very interesting to see how this first half kind of plays out between two teams who have struggled in the first half so far this season. Second, control the ground. Control it a lot better. They gave up 6.1 yards a carry last week against Bellhaven. And when you've got Keaton Duda, we saw him take over to start the second half, getting those just chunk plays, 12 yards, eight yards, 15, four, yep. nine. Like it was just one after the other. If that starts happening to you and you're giving up legitimately 6.1 yards of carry, I mean, two runs is the first down each time you do that. Yeah. That that could put you on the long uh, on the wrong end of a long game. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Where, and it's gonna get it's gonna get humid today. It's yeah. gonna get hot. You cannot start getting beat that early on the ground uh, for a game like this. Lastly, sustain and finish drives. I mentioned this with Sagu as well, but the offense last week for Millsaps really wasn't dreadful. There wasn't a ton of three and outs, or there was a couple of interceptions and fumbles, but eight of their 12 drives went for five plays or more. Uh, five plays or more. So it wasn't quick three and outs. They were putting together eight, nine play drives, but they only scored on three of them. They had a pick six as well. They got them to 28 yep. points. Yep. They only scored on three of those eight drives where they kind of sustained and picked up some first downs. If you're picking up first downs, you need to keep on moving down the field. Even if you're getting three, find a way to get some points on the board and sustain those drives all the way to at least at least where you are attempting points. Absolutely. And it's going to be important for both both teams today to try to stick to these keys and try to stick to the game plan to walk away with a victory. Now, Tim, this is an out-of-conference game for both Sagu and Millsaps for the majors. Now, you hear the term Division Three, and, and at the ear, it sounds scary. Like, oh, Sagu's playing a Division Three football team today. What does, uh, what's it mean for a Division Three team to walk in out of conference here for Sagu? You mentioned, you mentioned Austin College, who Millsaps plays, that, that, that same, same level of competition. We know this. We've been doing this a long time. Sagu used to kind of beat up on Austin College. So yeah. what, what's it mean for, for Millsaps? Really, to me, I always see Division Three and NAIA as mirror images of each other. The team stores the top, you don't want to mess with. Right. Like there is, we talk about that talent gap in the NAI, even between number 10 and number 15. Right. And I think you see that a lot in D3. That's why Sagu's always found a way to really match up well against teams from this conference, against your Austin Colleges, even against Howard Payne back in the day occasionally. Uh, so there really is a lot of evenness. The way you approach a game like this, I think can be very freeing. Sagu saw Ottawa for the second time in six months last week. You get used to teams. You have to put together a specific game plan. You're seeing guys for the third, fourth times. So in a way, you don't get to be yourself as much. You're so focused on, okay, well, we're going to have to change this a little bit this week to focus on this conference opponent. Plus, conferences get identities. Uh, you think about it in, in uh, Division One. You've got the SEC. They're always big defense. You've got the Big 12. They're always big offense. Yeah. The Sooner kind of has an identity. Yeah. This gives you a chance. Throw that all out the window. Go be yourself. Establish your own identity today. And that goes for both teams. Just find a way to do whatever you want to do. You're not worried about putting uh, you know, things on tape right. for a team to watch next week. Right. Because it's just kind of a freeing game. Yep. Go out and do whatever you want to do. Try some new stuff. See if you can kind of forge some, some new game plans, really. So I, I always like these non-conference games. They, yeah. they feel a little freeing. They, maybe the pressure's a little bit lower because you're not looking at that conference standings bar. You're not a, a rival or anything. Right. But in a way, I feel like these can be some of the most fun, freeing games. Just go be yourself. 
don't worry about what the other guy's doing. Just focus on what you're doing. Absolutely. I think we're going to be in for a good one. And like you said, it's a little less pressure being a non-conference game. Honestly, also, the Millsaps Majors is one of my favorite teams and mascots that I've had to say so far. <laughs> it just it rolls off the tongue. Not to not to also forget about Jet Coleman. I know you're going to say his name 100 times today. Whether, he, whether he's making plays or not, I'm going to find a way to work it <laughs> in. No, yeah, there's nothing like a little alliteration. Millsaps Absolutely. Majors. That just oh, yeah. works really it rolls well. Rolls off the tongue. Absolutely. Well, we're getting ready to go down live to the field for the opening fest activities, including the prayer, national anthem, and the coin toss. Don't go anywhere. We're in store for a good one. Both teams looking to bounce back after a loss last week. Millsaps Majors versus Sagu Lions right here on the Sagu Sports Network. as we honor God in prayer. Then please remain standing and face the flag as we honor our nation with the singing of the national anthem. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today, for this time here. Lord, we thank you for another day that's not promised to us. We thank you for that gift of life. And Lord, we pray for this game between these two teams that you protect them from all injury and all harm, Lord. We pray also that you guide us on our travels back home as well. We love you and we thank you. It's in Jesus' name, amen. And now the national anthem being sung by SAGU student Demarius Brown. Oh, say can you see by the dawn early light what so proudly we held at our twilight, let's gleaming, whose bronze Christ and bright stars through the perilous fight. Oh, the rails pause we watch were so gallantly screaming. And the rock is regular, the bus bursting in there, gay through the night that our flag was still Oh, Satan, the star-spangled banner, yeah, way. Oh, the land of the free and the home of the
Welcome back to the Sagu Sports Network. We are just about ready for the, the coin toss here to see who gains possession. Captains for Sagu, looks like walking out today will be Jordan Barlow, as well as Damaris Heron, Kevion Davis, and big number 77 for the Lions, Roderick Williams, step, takes a step back. And then the last captain is Hayden Evans for Sagu. See on your screen there, we got our noon kickoff here and then some big ones all across the conference. We talked about them pregame, but at 1 p.m. Louisiana College kicks off in Arizona. Take on the Firestorm, 2 p.m. Langston going up to Wayland Baptist, play the Pioneers, and then the game of the week. Oh, yeah. uh, we debated this. Is that the Sooner Athletic Conference Championship in week three? <laughs> and I said no, because Arizona, said, uh, Arizona College still exists uh, and the season is not won or lost in week three. I, I, it, it could be a hinge point. It could be an absolute, especially if Wesleyan wins. That could be an absolute hinge point that we're just talking about. Let's see who what, won the toss here. Sagu deferred last week to Ottawa, so we'll see what happens this week. Sagu won the toss. And, and we'll receive. Like Sagu will is electing to receive. Yep. So change the strategy up a little bit. So they've they've won two uh, two coin tosses and gone with two different strategies. They gave up a touchdown last week at the first drive. Don't forget. Oh, we got picks coming in. Majors by a game-winning field goal from wow. Vance Laws. So yeah, be okay. sure the chat's already filling up. We have to tell people you should get in there. But yeah, Check get in the chat there. on YouTube. Uh, Put, it, put your comment in and it could be featured here. And of course, follow us on all of our social uh, network platforms, Sagu Sports Network and Sportsnet. So, so predicting, Vance Law is predicting a game-winning field goal, putting you on the spot here, Tim. When is the last time that we saw here, what we broadcasted, a game-winning walk-off field goal? Oh, I, 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 almost, I, almost, <laughs> I almost thought like, wait, how am I gonna get this? Nestor Higuera. <laughs> <laughs> Big old Nestor Higuera going viral on Making Twitter. Making National was interviewed by Pat McAfee I, on his show. I, I, I tell people, you got to watch whatever's going viral tomorrow is happening today on the Sagu Sports Now, That was a great moment. Obviously, we were, we were always kind of cheering for the Lions coming away with the win. But if they can't get the win, that was an amazing end to a great Absolutely. game against Arizona Christian. Yeah, I, You almost stumped me for a second and go, wait, it's, it's the most groundbreaking play we've seen. <laughs> Big old Nestor Higuera. Uh, what a moment. Oh, we are one of the, the first con I see it here it's not going to be up yet because that just came in Jace Coleman cheering on Jet Coleman in this game today uh, I know you're excited for that name Tim we are off we are underway the opening kickoff will be fielded at the three yard line trying to go across the field here I think I heard a whistle and it looked like the, the, the blockers for Sagu did as well I, I think that maybe they thought because you can call for a fair catch inside I believe the 10 yard line to, to get the ball at the 25. And I think they thought maybe a fair catch was called and and brought in. I do not know if that was an inadvertent whistle because the referees did not stop play afterwards. Yeah, I thought I heard a whistle too. And it did seem like just about half the field slowed up, uh, but they will mark the ball at the 27. So the play was not blown dead. Fortunately for the Lions, they were able to, to get two yards more than they would have for the yeah. touchback. That could have been very dangerous because the blockers just stopped running. They stopped blocking They, they stopped playing. Here we are, Jordan Barlow comes out five wide, empty backfield. We do see him, he likes that, or he, he prefers that quarterback keeper out of five wide. We'll see what they do here on first down. Here is Barlow, takes a snap, he's back to pass. They bring pressure, quick header to the outside to Dudek. Dudek brings it in, bobbles it, but he's able to corral it and go down for a gain of three. Yeah, a little bit of a bobble pass there, but in a way that almost seemed to kind of bring him in the right direction, chasing it down in order to circle back around and pick up a few extra yards going against Adrian Turner there. Second and seven here for the Lions. Dudek goes back into the backfield here with Barlow. Two stacked to his right, sends a man in motion. He keeps it, they're running an option. Barlow fakes the pitch. Oh, and he gets the defender. He's out for the races. He's down past the 50, throws a stiff arm. He's gonna get brought down from behind, but in Majors territory. What a fake pitch there by Barlow to his option man. Yeah, Zachary Johnson going in motion behind the quarterback and Barlow times that perfectly. Does the little fake pitch at the perfect moment here. He's going around the corner. You see he's locked in, locked in, looking at the defender and finally fakes him off Ooh. and just completely 
throws Chase Hurd out of his shoes for a big run from Jordan Barlow. That's the first time this year we've seen them run an option of that sort. Yeah, that, that's just a true, true triple option there. Touch pass to Dudek. Dudek around the edge. He's dangerous in the open field, and the majors are going to push him out of bounds after a gain of, we'll call it six. Should be second and four. Saw that touch pass a couple times last week. You love it. You, it's just a quick hitter. It's a quick way to get the ball into the running back's hands. Dudek's already in motion, so he's got a full head of steam heading towards that corner. I like that play call. Not a bad little way to pad the quarterback's stats as well. Yeah, it, it is a pass. It is a pass. You always always love passing yards where I have to do is throw the ball <laughs> six inches. So Sagu comes out here second and four. Jamal Long at the bottom of your screen. Two in the backfield here for Barlow. Sends a man in motion. That is Dudik. Barlow takes it, hands it off, and he's going to be stopped for a loss, a loss of one as he handed it off to Kevin Busby. And that's going to be Zach Clark who comes in and really, I'm not even sure you can say makes the tackle. It's more just that he throws uh, the Lions offensive line and Antoine McDowell back, and that's what threw the running back off his feet. So strong push there. From Clark. That's a big TFL there for the Majors defense. It's going to yeah. be third and five. Slows down what has been a steady attack so far. Sets a man in motion. He's got no one back there with him. And we get a flag here. And it looks like it's going to go against Sagu. Some motion up front. It's going to make it third and ten. Yep, that's going to be on number 77. Roderick start. Williams. Offense, number 77. It's a five-yard penalty. It looked like Barlow may have been preparing for that designed quarterback run there. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to try to catch this Majors defense off guard, but yeah. now they're going to have to change it up a little bit. Yeah, it looks like Williams was anticipating the corner blitz, and he just kind of did a little stutter inside. It gets a little nerve-wracking, but now Sagu facing third and long after the drive was moving very well early on. Sends a man in motion. Here's Barlow. He's back to pass. He's got a clean pocket. He steps up, Ooh. unleashes it for Long. Long brings it in at the 10, carrying defenders down inside the 5. And that is what you do when you got a six foot four receiver. Throw it up. Let him go get it. And Sagu inside the red zone to goal situation. Dead. He's just so dead set on getting this ball. He is essentially triple covered. He is so good with his back to the end zone, going up, turning around, posting out, and making those catches. He's a deep threat, but he's also such a post threat. He is just, like I said, a complete wide receiver. Barlow with stacks on either side. Busby in the backfield. Takes a snap. He's going to hand it off to Busby. Busby has a hole. He's into the end zone. Sagu gets on the board first. Their opening drive goes down the length of the field and Busby caps it off with a rushing touchdown and barring the extra point, they will go up seven to nothing here over the majors. You want to talk about a balanced first drive, getting some with Dudek on the ground, you run some read option, you go with a deep pass, some touch passes, and then just cleaning it up with a nice four yard touchdown run. That was a beautifully executed first drive from the Lions. 73 yard drive, that's not a bad way to start out the game. Here is Kieran Woodley on for the extra point. It is up and it is good. And Sagu, just like that, goes up seven to nothing. And a drive that lasted just a little over three, or just a little over three minutes. Like I said, just a very well executed drive and getting to put all of those different things into motion. You know, you're getting, getting some stuff on the ground, going deep, some underneath passes. You just, you just love the way that first drive looked and finishing it off, facing that tough third and 10 when things got a little bit tough. You had a tackle for a loss. You had a five-yard penalty. You love the determination to finish that drive off. And Zagru jumps up to a seven to nothing lead. As we prepare for the kickoff here after the touchdown, it's a little bit of a, a weather update because I'm seeing umbrellas in the stands, Tim, but it's not because it's raining. It is because there is heavy sunlight on everybody in the stands and it is a hot one here in Waxahachie. It's going to be important to see uh, if a team can get up big here, Tim, to start the game. It's going to be tough to come back both because of the situation as well as uh, the weather. You just get tired so much faster when you're in this kind of weather, this yeah. kind of heat. It, it can wear on you in these kind of situations. The humidity, the sun bearing down, 
It's going to be a hard fought one today. Low line drive kick brought in at the 10. Trying to go across the field with it. There is the Sagu kick coverage team. A flag comes in late. It looks like it's going to go against Millsaps here. It looks like maybe there was a hold on the back side of the play. It's Montreal Phoenix on the return. Yeah, that's almost always going to be almost ho always holding or blocking the back. On the return, blocking the back of number 24, 10 yards from the spot. It's a first down. Marquise Tenner gets called for the block in the back, so that will negate actually a pretty decent return there for Millsaps. They were going to get more yardage than the touchback would have been worth, but now they're backed up to just about on their own 10-yard line. We'll call it the 11. Yeah, so that's where Caleb Thompson will start, down 7-0 already. Comes out four wide, one man in the backfield. He's going to fake the handoff, try to go across the middle, incomplete. Good coverage there by Sagu. They try to go with a quick pass, and Sagu just all over it. Sagu got hit on a couple of those last week, those quick slants over the middle. They do a good job of staying right on the route there, not biting on the play action pass. No room to thread that one in. Pass intended for Nick Hayes. Three out wide to the right here for Thompson. He's back to pass. Has a clean pocket. He steps up. He's going to tuck it and run. He's down past the 15, down past the 20. He ducks out of bounds at the 25 for a first down. And that is one of the things that he can do is make plays with his feet. Yeah, not worried at all. He's looking right here and immediately sees, nope, nobody's open, and there's the hole. As soon as he identifies that he has plenty of running room, just five foot nine, so he, he doesn't look like he has a whole lot to, to spare out there when he's running, but he's quick. He gets up to the 26-yard line. Some big breathing room there for the majors. New set of downs here for the majors. They will fake the handoff, swing it out wide, and there is the Sagu defense, a quick stop on the quick hitter. But he's going to fall forward. He's going to pick up actually a pretty good chunk there on first down, make it second and four. Yeah, Tezzo's going to fight for a few extra yards. So what would have only about a gain of three will make it second and about five. And yeah, we'll call it second and five. They did move it back about half a yard, so call it second and five. A little bit of a heavier formation here for the majors. They bring an H back in. They fake the handoff. He's going to roll out to his left. Throws across body and just short hops his intended receiver on the outside. That is D.B. Bennett. And it'll be third down. Doubt this was going to go for much further anyways. You see kind of nice the check play right there coming out of the backfield. Even if it had been caught, Jalene Brown was coming in hot. And he was probably going to keep him down right around the line of scrimmage anyway. So Zagu with some really good defense on a stretch the field kind of play. You actually don't hate those kind of drops. Because like you said, it would be no gain or maybe even a loss of one. So it keeps it at third and five. Here is Thompson. He's back to pass. Gets it across the middle. It's going to be short of the marker down right at the 35. But it does make it an interesting fourth and one here. I don't see movement on the major sideline, and there it is. They bring the punt unit out, so they will punt the ball back to Sagu, or at least come out in punt formation here, as the Sagu defense gives up one first down, but holds strong on the next three plays as we face a fourth down. That was Austin Russell on the catch, mentioned in pregame, as having caught 13 passes last week. You can see why, just a great safety net right underneath. Just need to be one yard further up the field. You always hate punting on fourth and one. Sagu showing a little bit of pressure on the corner here. Low line drive kick, but it's going to take a very good majors bounce as it touches out of bounds right at the 20-yard line. It's actually not a bad punt. It, it was yeah. low. It looked a little ugly, but it absolutely got the job done off the foot of Ethan Clapatch. And I'm pretty sure Clapatch felt the pressure coming. Sagu sh showed some serious pressure from those corners. They were getting in there pretty quick. I think he might have felt that coming and said, I've got to get this out fast with a line drive kick. So yeah, all things considered, the way that kind of came off, good bounce, good roll. Zaggy will start at their own 20 yard line. A little bit further back than where they started that first drive where they went for 73 yards and a touchdown. We'll have to drive 80 yards if they want to punch it into the end zone again here 
for the Lions. Barlow has stacks on either side. Keaton Dudek in the backfield. He makes a change here. Barlow fakes a handoff, swings it out wide. He's got his man, throws a stiff arm, breaks a tackle, and then gets drilled out of bounds. He completed the pass to Adrian Rowell, and he has eight yards there on first down. Took a big hit there on the sidelines. Love the route tree, though. When you go stacks, you have the first guy take that slant, which completely clears off the first defender, gives plenty of room. That's a design play to go pick up eight yards. That's exactly what it did. Gave you a really good, solid first down play. Bring it up second and short. Second and two here for Barlow and this Lions offense. Dudek remains in the backfield, stacked down at the bottom of your screen. Sends Dudek in motion, so Barlow will be by himself. Back to pass. He's going to have to make something happen here with the feet. Trying to direct traffic. He gets the pass off, completed to Dudek. And Dudek goes out of bounds. A good job there by Barlow. Extends the play. He was very, very close to that line of scrimmage but a heads up play. And he had to do some serious weaving in the backfield. Just keeps pointing, keeps pointing, waits. He knows Duda can get open eventually. And that was not an easy throw. Absolutely the majors not. were still all over that play. He had to kind of wobble it in there, but picks up another big third down, sorry, first down on a second down play. And that will move them almost to midfield. So Just shy right at the 49. How good is Keaton Dudek? He, he's listed as a running back, but he, he might as well also be a receiver. He's an absolute dual threat. And he's what you want in a modern running back. Barlow fakes to, to Dudek. He has heavy pressure. He completes it to Blaine Rowe. He's going to make a man miss. He's down past the 40. Cuts it inside, then cuts it back outside, driven out of bounds. We don't see, we don't see him often in this new Sagu offense, but he has been a very good receiver for his entire career here at Sagu. Has Blaine Rowe. And there we see his first yep. reception on the season. And you watch Barlow, that play was going to Dudek. He saw that Dudek was covered, starts scanning. He's been so good lately of scanning through his read progressions. Sees that Rose there, knows the pressure's coming, gets it out just in time, and another big play down to the 33-yard line. Yeah, always love Blaine Rowe, that, kind of that prototypical tight end guy, that safety underneath play. Does a good job of breaking tackles, getting a few extra yards. Don't see him as much as we used to, but when he does get the ball in his hands, he makes good things happen. He is a tough, tough option, tough to bring down. Here's Barlow, sends a man in motion. He's back to pass again, facing immediate pressure. He rolls out to his left. He gets the pass off to Dudek on the sideline. Dudek has it inside the 20, and Sagu, for the second straight drive, has entered the red zone as they move the chains one more time. And Barlow has gone to the turf on three consecutive plays. You don't love seeing that, but you love his elusiveness facing down two different defenders. That's not a perfect spiral right there at all, <laughs> but it's what it had to be to get down the field. And Dudek, again, it's like they've got some telepathy going on right now. Dudek knows how to get open when Barlow is facing that pressure and has to get rid of the ball. They, they are absolutely on the same wavelength, absolutely. So inside the red zone at the 18 to be exact, here is Barlow. He's got stacks down at the bottom of your screen. Dudek in the backfield. Barlow. Takes a handoff, goes back to throw, immediately broken up by the Majors defensive back. Good coverage there. Ryan takes. Ryan takes, yep. Comes in over the top. Barlow's going in, obviously for one of his favorite targets, Zachary Johnson. Good read over the top and at least for a moment, slows down what has, again, just been a steadily progressing Sagu offense since the start of the game. No rushing attempts yet on this drive. Every gain, every play has been a passing attempt. So we'll see what they do here in second and ten. A flag comes in, and it's going to be a false start against Sagusa. That will make it second and 15. Let's see who jumped early. False start. Offense number 63, five-yard penalty. It's second down. This one's on Avery Robinson. As your second pre-snap penalty, they were able to overcome the first one. But it's what you want to avoid. Like I said, you're going to get holdings. You're going to get pass interferences. You're going to even get face masks. Pre and post-snap, that's what you got to get rid of. Oh, Barlow had him offsides. It will draw a flag. He's got a chance to go deep to the end zone. He's going for Jamal Long. Goes up, brings oh. it down. Jamal Long from Barlow on the free play. The flag on the field will be offsides. And Jordan Barlow takes advantage, throws a perfect ball. Jamal Long goes up and gets it. And Sagu has the chance to go 14-0. On the defense, that penalty will be declined. 
The play stands. I mean, what can you say about this? Again, Jordan Barlow with a free play. He knows what to do. Beautiful pass, and Jamal Long just go up and get it. He made it look easy. I, I, it's as soon as he was over there, you're like, oh, he's going to go up and get this ball. He has completely emerged as a dominant receiver on this team so far this season. Here is Kieran Woodley on for the extra point. Snap is down. The hold is good, and the kick is good, and Sagu will go up 14-0. So, Tim, we talked pregame about the grit and the will of Jordan Barlow, and you mentioned also another word, the intelligence, and it showed <laughs> there on the on the heads-up play. The offsides knew he had a free shot, took it. Why not? 6-4 receiver. That's how they won their first game. Louisiana College, they're, they're driving down the field to try to kick a game-winning field goal. With eight seconds left, Louisiana College jumps offsides. Barlow goes, I got a free play. We're not going to put this on the kicker's leg. I'm going to go to the end zone. Throws it in for the touchdown to win the game right there. He knows he's got his five free yards. Might as well just toss it into the end zone. Throw it deep. And when you've got Jamal Long, why not? The guy makes plays. I'm going to make a comparison here. Uh-oh. Prime era Des Bryant. <laughs> I'm saying it. He is big. Uh. He is strong. He just goes up and gets the ball. Those fade routes in the end zone. I'm saying it. He has got that strong ability, but he can also beat you deep. He's not slow. He's, he's not just a big rumbling tight end here who's going to fight you in the end zone. He is uh, truly emerging as a triple threat wide receiver on everything he can do. The kick is brought in just past the 15. And a good job by the Sagu kick coverage as they bring him down. It was a shorter kick, so uh, a return just past the 30-yard line. You'll take that if you're Sagu. And going back to Jamal Long, a lot of times you see these bigger receivers try to go up and bring those jump balls in with their body, with yeah. their chest. He's got these strong hands to go up confidently, with full arms. I mean, he's got the, 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 the hand strength to bring it down and go up and get it at the high point. You'll love to see that from a big receiver. Yeah, don't let it hit you, hit you in the chest. Catch it, bring it in. Like everything he's doing right now is just so crucial to Jordan Bottle's development this year. 14 to nothing, and the majors need an answer here. First down here, and the bad snap, he picks it up, and he's rolling out looking for anybody. He loses it. He's going to get brought down out of bounds, and that play was just blown up from the start. Caleb Thompson had no help. The bad snap, he lost it, and he's going to get brought down for a loss of, we'll call it five yards, maybe six. Yeah, nothing doing here. Bad snap, rolling, trying to find anybody open. He finally goes to just get rid of it. Comes out of his hand. That could have been much worse yes, twice. Yes, could have. Really, the majors are very lucky to come away with the ball still in their possession after that play. Is that just everything went wrong from the start? They call it second and 15. So, backing up, going the wrong direction are the majors. There you see Austin Russell at the bottom of your screen. He is guarded by Kevion Davis, like we predicted in pregame. Here is Thompson. He's back to pass. He just swings it out wide to his man in the flat. He's going to get brought down after a decent gain there to try to make something manageable here. They will make it third and 11, so a good job to keep that from getting back to the original line of scrimmage. Yeah, just thrown there a little bit off target, but good adjustment there to haul it in and pick up a few, at least make it a little more manageable. Third and 11 is something you can imagine converting versus third and 15. The play comes in from the major sideline. Getting a little bit of relief here with some cloud coverage. Always nice in a day like this. Here is Caleb Thompson facing third and long. Sagu looks like they were bringing pressure, and they do. Stepping up, moving away from the pressure. The backhanded flip was a great play in itself, but a good play by the Sagu defensive back. Wrapping up and then a violent takedown by Kevion Davis. That's going to bring up fourth down. Yeah, this is a lot of work by Thompson. Scrambling for his life and just identifying that Montreal Phoenix is open. So two drives in a row now, though, that they're going to punt in short yard situations. You always hate that, especially when you're falling down early like this, to be so close. Good job by Thompson to keep that play alive and make a chance for it, but just not enough, and they will punt it away again, this time on fourth and two. Sagu looks to be bringing pressure again, and they do. The oh. kick is blocked. It's up in the air. It's going to end up gaining yardage, fortunately there for the majors, but the kick was tipped. 
and it's going to settle right at midfield. So Sagu on two punt attempts here for the majors get heavy pressure, and the second time it pays off as Sagu will take over at the 50-yard line. They must have seen something in tape uh, throughout the week that has inspired them to bring this pressure. That was a clean block. Uh, the majors are again a little bit lucky that the trajectory at least went forward and rolled the midfield. That's one of those you could have seen being deflected back to the 20-yard oh, yeah. line. And you're scooping and scoring there, but either way, Sagu takes over with great field position right at midfield. Already up 14-0. They've looked completely dominant on offense in these first two drives. So here is Barlow. He's I got, got a prediction. I think we're about to see a running drive. Oh, we'll see here. Here's Barlow, and he does not hand it off to Duda. He throws it out to the flat. I think he heard you, Tim. <laughs> he falls forward for nine yards there on first down. Pass completed uh, to Zachariah Johnson. I just got to put it, I feel like the Lions, now that they're up 14-0, might really try to start establishing the run here. But also, why steer away from what's working? A little play action and finding Johnson in the corner. Barlow is just dealing right now, and his receivers keep finding ways of getting open. Sagu goes with the heavy package here. They bring in Latrell Tibet, the 5'11 running back, wearing 44, weighs in at just under 220. He comes in at the tight end spot, so we'll see if they do go short yardage here. Barlow takes a snap, hands it off to Dudek. Dudek to the outside, tries to make a man miss, runs over a defender and falls forward for the first down. He needed one, and he picked up four, or three, rather, so he's going to move the chains here for Sagu. And he's going to throw this shoulder into Jacoby Howard and going to win the battle. Throws Howard to the ground and fights forward. We can see him spin. We can see him uh, juke and glide. That time he just lowered the hammer. Not what you expect to see from a guy who's just 5'10 and 185, but he's he's got some strength. He absolutely does. We have a, a, a majors defender down. Looks like it might have happened in the trenches. It's hard to see from... Yeah, it looks like he's ankle. holding on to his ankle, and that's just obviously so easy to happen. That's number nine. Jabriel Fields is the one who's down. He is going to get up and walk. So it is a historic day here for the Sagu Sports Network. We actually have a dual broadcast going on right now, Tim. Mac Yu coming on the road here to face the Sagu Lady Lions volleyball team who has looked very, very good. We're going to have some live look-ins on that game and our very own Devin Webb, who is doing the commentating over there. She's doing a great job this season, so we'll get some live look-ins to that game uh, this, throughout today. This is a multi-channel network now. Sagu Sports Network 2. It, it's the, crazy. The Ocho. Here we go. <laughs> Let's just keep rolling. So here's a new set of downs here for the Lions. Barlow sends Blaine Rowe in motion. Takes a snap. He's going to fake the handoff, dump it out to Blaine Rowe. Rowe Tries to make a man miss, but it gets brought down after a gain of, we'll call it four there on first down. Another well-drawn play, though. Just picks up four, but get to pick play action. Blaine Rowe gets open in the flat, and it's just the true hustle play from Nicholas Ohanta, who's going to hunt him down and keep that from going for much more. But like we said, we like seeing Blaine Rowe get involved in this offense. He's such a good safety net in so many situations. We love seeing him get more involved. So here is second and six for the Lions. A three stack at the bottom of your screen. You see them run this formation quite a bit. Barlow sends Dudek in motion. He's back to pass. Quick hitter down the sideline. Has man wide open. It was Dudek. He went on the wheel route. Can he make a man miss? He can. He's down to the five. Into the, oh, he steps out of bounds. Was so close to the end zone trying to break tackles, but his foot just hits out of bounds. It looked like going to mark him down at the 12-yard line with a huge pitch and catch. And what a great play call or audible, whatever it was. Dudek going on that wheel route. There was only one defender. See the oh, he's tiptoeing yeah, right the line. There. Yep, that left foot came down out of bounds. But it will be first and 10 inside the red zone. So three drives in a row here for Sagu into the red zone. And I just love that look right there. You get the one-on-one -on -one isolation. You throw Dudek out there so fast that the majors didn't have time to respond. He's wide open, almost goes for a touchdown, but picks up another big first down to the 12. Barlow going to fake the handoff, dumps it out to the flat. Is throw just a little off target for his intended receiver there. That was uh, Zachary Johnson. Makes it second and 10. Jacoby Howard was offering the pressure there, and if that had been tipped a little bit more, 
Might have been Howard getting a pick six this week. <laughs> Bring up second and ten. And well, I, I said a running drive. They ran once, so uh, that's more than they ran the drive before, <laughs> minus the uh, minus I think one play. It's, so it's true. It's but, true. Uh, but uh, they definitely have kept it in the air. And why not? Jordan Barlow is having himself a day, spreading the ball around to a number of different receivers. Here is Barlow sends another man in motion. It looks like he will hand it off to Dudek. Dudek cuts it upfield, looking for some running room. He follows the block on the outside for a, a good run there on second and 10. He's going to pick up, we'll call it eight, making it third and two. They can still pick up the first down. It's not a goal to go situation quite yet. Barlow does a good job of kind of faking he still had the ball, kind of held off the defender there for a second, froze Thomas Patterson just long enough. That's what was hurting Sagu a lot last week is they were blocking well on the on the corner they were running to, but they weren't blocking well on the other side. They're getting caught from behind a lot. So we'll be third and about oh, a full third, three yep, from third, the five-yard line. Third and three, so they give him seven on that second down run. Barlow directing traffic. Sends a man in motion. Here's a snap. Hands it off to Dudek. Dudek following his blockers. Can he get it in? He can! Into the end zone as Keaton Dudek just kind of glided his way through the blockers and almost went untouched into the end zone. And again, Sagu, barring an extra point, will go up 21 to nothing. A three-score game here with one minute left to go in the first quarter. Great run by Dudek, but a much better blocking. I mean, just look at this guy. Almost untouched up the gut. He had a couple different places to choose from and does a great job of identifying which hole to take. Two straight runs by, so hey, it was a running drive. Two straight runs there, by Dudek, there you finish go. it off. There you go. For the touchdown. You, you called it, Tim. <laughs> Here's Nailed it. Kieran Wilde, he falls down on the kick attempt, and it is good, fortunately for Kieran Wilde. He lost his footing. His left foot looked to slip as he planted, and he still was able to will it through. And that will indeed make the score 21 to nothing. No, wait, is Dudek wearing the turnover chain? I thought that was a turnover that, chain. I saw that last week. I guess it's I, I guess it's not a turnover. That, Maybe it's a touchdown chain. Because Kevion Davis wore it after the pick six. So it's a touchdown chain. Touchdown chain. Okay. All right. I get it. I get it. You, you're right, though. You typically see the turnover chain, and, and we saw it last week. We thought maybe that's what it meant, but nope. You, you get in the end zone, you put on the chain. Yep. You see the, the plea there? Come on, Millsaps. This is a big drive for him for them after they fell down big in their first game and weren't able to come back. They find themselves on the road down 21 to nothing. Haven't really been able to generate anything on offense yet. And they need to find a way to get down there. I'm calling another pick six by Jet from Jace Kuhlman. Ooh. Jet Kuhlman, yes. Yeah, so we actually get, we have a prediction and they could use it right now. Yeah. That's, that's how you get back in this game. You get a touchdown here and then you rely on Jet Coolman. Jet Kuhlman. Cool man. Here is the kick from Woodley. This one is fielded just shy of the 15. We'll field it at the 13. He's looking for some running room, and the, the gap closed quickly as Sagu's kick coverage did a good job there. But the Majors will take over just past the 30-yard line. They marked him down at the 32. Best starting field position of the day for them. Let's and see if they can get something moving here. The Majors have to score on this. I feel like they have to at least get three on this drive. Uh, still the first quarter, down three scores. This is a quite the hill to climb. For yeah, the yeah. We, we've seen, obviously, we saw Sagu rally from 21 down to make it a one possession game last week. But it does feel like, especially because Sagu's offense has been so methodical, it hasn't been oh, yeah. big play type Absolutely. stuff. They need to find a way to get some points right here because Sagu's offense is going to be tough to stop. And they will hand it off. We have not seen them run the ball to this point. Been a lot of play action. The pile is still moving. Has not been brought down late yet, and the pile moves forward. It got stopped for maybe a two-yard gain, but that pile, the offensive lineman, the running back, kept those feet moving and fell forward for maybe another four yards. Yeah, that, that play I almost looked away. I thought it was completely over, but Nick Shanklin, with the assist from the offensive line, just kind of kept pushing and pushing and, yeah, call it a second and four. Good effort there, effort play there by the, the majors. It will hand it off again, trying to make a man miss. He's going to get brought down. He fights forward for an extra yard. He's right at the marker. I think they're going to give him the first down, and yep. they will. Nick Shanklin gets just the second first down. 
on the day so far for the majors and that may do it for the first quarter and it will they will let the time expire so after quarter number one sagu up 21 to nothing three for three on scoring drives for touchdowns are the lions and the defense so far has been up to the task at stopping this majors offense yeah a complete first quarter from the lions three drives all over 50 yards methodically working their way down the field Touchdowns from three different players, Busby, Dudek, and then Barlow along in the end zone. Everything you want to see from this Lions offense. The defense, like I said, only the second first down allowed of the quarter. They consistently got the majors off the field. When you have less first downs allowed than touchdowns, you're having a pretty good day defensively. Yes, hey, absolutely. There you take a look at the Student Athletic Conference standings. Langston currently at the top in a three-way tie with Ottawa, who we saw here last week, and Texas Wesleyan, who we talked about pregame, are up the highway rivals here uh, just up the road in Fort Worth. So uh, a good top three to look at. Sagu right now in fifth place, 1-1 one one in conference. Wayland Baptist 1-0, holding on to that fourth spot. And then you see the second half, Arizona Christian, Texas College, Louisiana College, who's had a very tough start to the season. They says they are 0-3, but the competition that they have played has been insane. So yeah. take that record with a grain of salt. Line in an Oklahoma panhandle rounding out the Sooner Athletic Conference. Just great to see this conference get bigger every year. Remember, oh. the, remember the CSFL days? when Six teams. Yeah, I remember four or five some yeah. years. It was just like hardly even a conference. It is, it's great to see the group. He's the got conference. a man wide open. It's Russell, and it's almost intercepted. What a play there. Uh, the, the receiver playing defense that time. That's who we talked about in pregame, wearing number 14 in Austin. Russell broke yeah. up the interception opportunity for Sagu. Damaris Heron has it. I mean, it's coming in. Russell throws it. And I'm not sure we will see it here, but Damaris Heron pulls a Michael Jackson move to get off the <laughs> ground. I, if y'all can see the replay, he pulled like a moonwalk to get Damn. up. That was impressive. Russell was wide open. Yeah, he was wide open, and the throw just didn't have enough to get there. If Thompson puts a little bit more on that, Russell's catching that and going to the Oh, end he's zone. gone. Yep, he's gone. Second and 10 here for the major sends a man in motion. He's back to pass. Down the sideline looking for Russell, and Russell can't bring it in. Uh, Airmailed throw there by Caleb Thompson. So not enough on one pass and a little bit too little much on the too next. Much. Yep. Thompson's just got to kind of level it out because uh, he, he has Russell out there. He has him there. Just got to find a way to deliver the ball into his hands, and he can make the play. Third and ten, a big one here. Four wide here for the majors, third and long. Here is Thompson, back to pass. He's got pressure, they throw the screen. It's completed, but he is brought down short of the marker and it will be fourth down and five. And it looks like right here at midfield, they've got a decision to make here. Do you punt at midfield or do you try to convert? They will elect to punt. Coach Isaac Carter sends out the punting unit and Sagu's defense, once again, another good stop here. Yep. Gave up one first down, but made the plays they need to. And that's three straight times now that on third down, the majors have had a completion to cut the yardage down, but just didn't have enough. And so right. they're gonna, so they punted on fourth and one, fourth and two, and fourth and five. You hate that feeling of punting in short and mid yard situations because you couldn't quite get enough on third down. So here is Ethan Clapatch. He's been busy today, has faced a lot of pressure. This one off cleanly. And a good block downfield, but it will take a Sagu bounce regardless inside the 20. So this is the worst starting field position so far today for Sagu. As they look to go four for four on their first four drives with touchdowns. And Tim, so far today, this offense has looked completely different than when we saw in the first half of last week's game against Ottawa. Just smooth. It's almost like everything you're doing is working. There's just days like that where every single play you try is just working. And they've done a good job of spreading the ball around to different receivers. Uh, you know, a little, little bit on the ground, just enough to keep, uh, keep the majors honest, make sure they can't just zone in on the pass completely. And finishing those drives, three drives into the red zone, all resulting in touchdowns. Kevin Busby into the game at running back here aside Jordan Barlow. Barlow takes a snap, fakes a handoff, looking for his receiver on the outside and a little miscommunication there as he was looking for uh, Zachary Johnson, or correction, on the outside that was uh, Mike Mouton. 
And he did not know he was the intended receiver at all. Jordan Barlow trying to get a quick play out there. <laughs> there was a little, there was a hand signal between Barlow and Mouton there. And I just think that maybe it got lost out there with his receiver. You know, they've got all these billboards on the sideline with different things and signals coming in and calls and your quarterback's giving you hand signals. I feel like you have to, like, know the wind talker code <laughs> to play offense some of these days now. It's, it's insane what these guys have to have memorized. Two men in the backfield here for Barlow. Interesting formation. They're both lined up to his left. And they're going to run the option. Here's Barlow. He's actually going to throw it out wide. Was it completed? No, it was not. It was dropped. So an interesting looking play there as Sagu will come out and face third down. The last time they faced third and long, Tim, Barlow got the Matrix to jump off sides and threw a dime to Jamal Long for a touchdown. So we'll see what they do here. Yeah, kind of almost was a quadruple option. You yeah. had the running back, you had the guy to pitch it back to, and then Barlow goes for the pass. Nothing doing there. And yeah, for the first time, Sagu facing a third and 10 and looking down the barrel of a three and out. Four wide here for Barlow. Busby in the backfield. He went with a hard a hard count there, but the Majors defense does not bite. Here's Barlow. He's back to pass. He's going to have to roll out. He's facing pressure. Dumps it out to Busby. It is completed. Busby brings it in. He's got a little room to run here, but it's stopped quickly by the Majors. So all of that for a two-yard gain. So that will be Sagu's first fourth down of the game. We do have another Millsaps Majors player down on the field. And Barlow has had to face a lot of pressure in this game. It just barely gets it out. And for a moment here, I thought Busby had something because everybody was either so far in the backfield or so far down the field. Well, if he had got through that one guy, he might have had a first down. But Barlow has excelled under pressure today, and the Majors have been bringing it. That time, however, they get to him just enough that there was nothing doing. It was very, very good recovery defense by the yes. Majors. They, they did a good and job of closing. Absolutely, because for a second there, it looked like Busby had a little bit to work with, and that would have been devastating to have Barlow wrapped up and give up a first down. So the defense is finally able to come out and rally with Sagu pinned a little bit deep and forces three and out. Good. The shaken up Majors player is John Netzinger. He's going to walk off on his own power. It looks like he's favoring that left shoulder, so it's good to see him walk off. Uh, walk off the field, but Sagu will bring out the punting unit with Seth Green, who had a very good game last week. Sagu did have to punt maybe a little bit more than they would have liked, but when Seth Green was out there, he did a pretty good job. Always always reliable to get you the, the, the 40 yards or 35, 40 yards you want out of a punt. Here is Green. Gets the punt off, and it's a good one. It does take a Sagu bounce after the second bounce. So that is where the Majors will take over is at the 40-yard line. So backed up deep in your own territory, that's a pretty good punt. You're happy with that outcome, especially considering how your defense has played so far in this one. Yeah, with the 21 nothing lead, you just want to make sure and avoid disasters on those kind of punts. Anything blocked or you know shanked out of bounds. Right. If you put the ball back on the other end of the field, the punter did his job. Millsap stats. Look at some stats overall. Sagu, of course, dominating 213 total yards already, just 42 for the Millsaps majors. See Caleb Thompson there struggled. He only completed about 50% of the passes last week and is at 50% right now. Needs to find a way to deliver that a little bit more. And if he saw some overthrown, saw some underthrown, he needs to dial it in on this drive. They will hand it off here on first down. And pretty good rush there on first. They're going to pick up six. So that is one of their best starts to a drive we've seen so far for the majors. As we see a new running back in there for uh, Millsaps, it's going to be Montreal Felix. Montreal Felix, rather. They, there's a lot of cool names on this team. Montreal <laughs> Felix, Jet Coleman. It's really good. Just well-named team, as well as the Millsaps majors just rolling off the tongue. <laughs> I love it. Makes it easy. Second and four, back to pass, looking down to sideline for Russell, and it's broken up. Another good play, Damaris Heron, this time with a little backflip as he got off the ground. I don't know how he, I can't do that. I, I hurt myself getting out of the bed in the morning. He loves, he loves going to the ground because he gets to pop up a cool ways. <laughs> great, a great break up there. That was awesome. Russell was being targeted. The ball was thrown a little bit slow. If it had been there a little quicker, Russell would have been all alone. But a great reaction from Heron to get over and break it up and bring up a third and four. Heron has phenomenal closing speed. And it definitely helps from the safety position to be that fast to close on a route that's out there on the sideline. Definitely helps. It's going to be third and four. 
We'll see what the majors decide to do here. They're going to have a design quarterback run right into the arms of Drake Rodriguez. And when he gets his mitts on you, you're not going anywhere. Drake Rodriguez brings him down for a loss of one, and it'll be fourth down. Yeah, Thompson, that's a design play from the beginning. And he had a little bit of room. At first, it looked like it was going to be well done. But Drake Rodriguez is just going to win. He's getting blocked. He's in the process of getting blocked and makes the tackle. And Sagu's going to force another punt. I don't even need to read the number. I just know. Look for the hair. Rodriguez made a play. One it's of good. the captains of the Sagu defense. It's good because you can't see the number. <laughs> That's all you got to rely on with Drake. Uh, it's, it's, it's seeing the hair. They come out to punt again. So another stop here for Sagu. They will bring pressure. Almost get there. They do run into the punter, but no flag. A flag on the back end, actually. So we'll see what this is. This looks like it could be in the area of maybe holding on one of those outside blockers. Either way, what a dazzling punt. The Absolutely. ball rolls out of bounds at the two-yard line. And if this penalty is on Sagu, they're going to start at the one-yard line. We'll yes, see. they will. Interesting to see where that those flags were thrown that early on in the play. Maybe too many men on the field for Sagu? That's all I can imagine when the flags come out that quick. If it's too many men on the field, that could result in a first down for, for Millsaps because that don't give them five yards. It may just be shy. It may be like fourth fourth and five and inches. There's so we'll see There's lots of discussion. And we got a white hat running over to the sideline. Oh, no, he's going to... He just wanted his spot in midfield. That's all he wanted, the W. He keeps looking back at the bench. We'll see. Oh. Well, he's... We already moved it, Coach. They already moved it, Coach. Love conversation. Defense offside, 12 on the defense. Illegal substitution. Penal results in a first down. Wow. So they had 12 men on the field and an offsides penalty on Sagu there. Regardless, five-yard penalty on fourth and five makes it first down here for Millsap. So they catch a break. The Sagu defense has to stay on the field. That is a huge that is big. break. That is big. Down 21 nothing, forced to punt it away again. The third. Getting five yards. That is first down. I mean, that's just huge. This is a completely potentially a game changing moment. They will hand it off, and he's got some room to run here. Another good gain there on first down. Again, that one, that carry by Montreal Felix. Take nothing away. Also, because it's wiped off the board because of the penalty, the phenomenal punt by Ethan Clapatch yeah. down inside the two yard line. Unfortunate, he's probably the only person who's upset by that. <laughs> yeah, you almost hate to accept the penalty. I mean, obviously, <laughs> nobody hates to accept that penalty, but it's like, oh, man, that, just, just somebody make sure we save that footage to prove I did it. Because it's not going to show up in the stat sheet anymore. Second and three, they will hand it off again. Here's Felix. Felix is brought down after no gain. A good tackle there. It looked like he was trying to guide his way through the defense. But a good job by Sagu brings up another third down. And this is... Two crucial plays coming up for the majors. You cannot let this gift go without getting something from it. You're down 21 nothing. Clock's ticking in the second quarter. You've got to find a way to pick up four yards. Is this four down territory if they Absol do not get this? Absolutely, here. no question. Ooh, oh. They do get Rodriguez to jump offside, so he's got a free play. He will go deep to Russell. Russell just gets carried out of bounds. The ball airmailed, but it will be another first down. So two first downs on this drive doubles their first down total on the game, and both have come by way of penalty. Yeah, that not, is killer for the Lions. Not what you want at all. Talk all about these pre-snap penalties. Now, they're a little bit different on defense because you're bringing blitzes. You're trying to disrupt. You get it. It's going to happen. But to have it happen on a fourth and five and a third and three is just a little bit of a kick to the shins right now. And it's keeping this major's drive alive, a drive that they absolutely have to get some points off of. Back to pass is Thompson. He's going to let it go to the flat. He's got his man. That's Felix. Felix makes a man miss. He's got some room to run. He's got the first down, lowers the shoulder, and goes out of bounds. So now the majors with some momentum here on offense. They're looking to get some points on the board. Another first down. This is just a great move by Felix. Shedding the tackler to pick up a good seven, eight, almost ten more yards after that. And they're down to the 23-yard line. The best drive of the day by far here for Millsaps. First and 10, Thompson fakes the handoff. He's rolling out to his left. Going cross body, looking for the end zone. He gets killed on the release. It's brought in. Is he in bounds? T 
Touchdown. Touchdown. What a throw <laughs> and catch. There is a flag on the play. I believe it will be roughing the passer, so you have to imagine it will be declined. Caleb Thompson, the 5'9 quarterback, stepping up into the face of pressure. I didn't see who he got hit there. I think he might have taken a lick from Keandre Belcher. So probably the smallest person on the field taking a hit from the largest. Roughing the passer. Defense number 55. So not, it was actually that Noah Gibson. Being forced on the kickoff. But what and, a pitch oh. and catch. Thompson wow. almost, almost, almost put around one inch too much on that. But an amazing catch from wow. Connor Ladner. What to, a play. To wow. get those toes down. A game-saving drive from the majors. Like I said, that moment, circle that moment, fourth and five, yep. the ball's been punted away. You're approaching 10 minutes in the second quarter. You're down 21 nothing. Getting that free first down, we could be talking about that for the rest of the game. That could be a potentially game-shifting moment. So the, the penalty, the roughing the passer penalty, you heard it, will be enforced on the kickoff. So Sagu is looking to have rough field position here after giving up the touchdown in which they had gotten off the field, but the penalty extended the drive. The extra point is up and it is good. And we have a 21-7 ball game after the incredible touchdown pass from Caleb Thompson, who got killed on the release, yeah. finding his man in the corner of the end zone. And then, like you said, Connor Ladner, just had to get that foot in bounds. Almost put a little bit too much on it, but what a drive. I, Crucial drive. When he unleashed it, I went, oh no, he just threw the ball out of the back of the end zone for a wide open. He could have put it anywhere in the end zone. He's going to catch it. So Ladner had to do his work to get it, but it all works out. And yeah, uh, whew, I, we, we debated this last week. Some people some nerds, some stats nerds, <laughs> will try to tell you momentum doesn't exist. It momentum absolutely does. Momentum exists. Absolutely does. That when that ball left the punter's foot, this game was feeling dire for the majors. Like, thinking about the bus ride home dire. Now it is 21-7. It feels completely fresh. You're kicking off from the 50. I, this is where I always love doing a nice high kick. Drop that ball in at the five-yard line. Rush down the field. See if something crazy happens. Oh, you do. Yeah, you absolutely don't want to kick this out of the end zone because that's only a, a net of 25 yards. You want to you want to kick this one high and maybe force uh, a, a big hit, maybe a fumble, but it looks like it will be a line drive kick and it will go through the end zone. So Sagu will take over here at the 25. So now you were just talking about momentum. Sagu comes out and they score. They go three for three, three touchdowns, up 21 nothing. It feels like Sagu has to score here. It almost does. It, it feels like now the majors are chasing. Now, yeah, they're, absolutely. now they're in the game. They're chasing you. They're right behind you. You had a three and out your last drive. So that disrupted your, your perfect scoring today. And then the majors go and with the help of a few penalties, get down the field. So yeah, now all of a sudden, up 21 nothing. you're like, hey, maybe we can kill this for the rest of the game. Maybe we can find a way to run the clock out from the second quarter. You can't. You never no. can. No. But it always it feels like you almost might. Send Zachary Johnson in motion. He will hand it off. Dudek bounces it to the outside, looking to get around the edge. He does and falls forward for a first down. Mm -hmm. And that will move the chain. So Zagu comes out with the ball on the ground and immediately one play, one first down. Great first run, and that's just simply Dudek with his speed going straight to the corner. He's like, I, yeah, I can beat seven or eight guys to the corner. This is just in Connor Ladner's first collegiate catch. Goes for a touchdown. That's pretty cool. He's one wow. for one on catches and one for one on scores. So that's a pretty, pretty cool moment for Connor Ladner. And Thank you, uh, Millsaps Athletics, for pointing that out. And that was a good catch, too. Uh, that's one oh, you're going to remember. Tapping both those. Does that have been the catch in the NFL, too? He had two feet down. And that first down play, the rush goes nowhere. Actually goes for a loss of one as Keaton Dudick wrapped up in the backfield. That's just the whole line standing up. Yep. Nobody giving an inch on the Millsap side. The initial contact made by Josh Smith. So second and 11. Sagu, Barlow has three out wide to his right at the bottom of your screen.
Here's Barlow, fakes a handoff. Quick hitter to the outside, the long almost intercepted. Jacoby Howard on the outside, almost, almost just a half second away from a pick six that would have completely shifted the feel of this game. I already mentioned his name once today. He had a chance at one before. That one, yeah, if, if that step is a split second earlier, that ball is in his hands and the Millsaps are, majors are down by a touchdown. Looks like a timeout was called. I think. By, by the majors. That's actually, I, I am I am okay with that timeout. You, you got your defense here. You got a little bit of momentum here in this one after the touchdown drive. Now it's third and 11. You want to draw something up here to try to get off the field and get your offense with the ball back. And Tim, they have actually gotten really good pressure on Barlow today. Barlow's just done a good job of, of weaving through it and, and making plays with his feet and extending plays. So you got to think they're going to come up with something uh, maybe a little bit crazy here on defense. Yeah, or even just a reminder. Just getting everybody to the field to say, hey, this is a big play. This is a big moment in this game. If we get the ball back down 14 points with eight and a half minutes left, everything's fresh. It's like a totally fresh ball game at this point. If you give up a first down, then it almost kind of starts to feel like what it was feeling like a minute ago. You don't want to give another big third down conversion. Looking at some Sagu stats, Jordan Barlow, he has been on fire thus far in this game. 159 yards and a touchdown. They're facing a big down here. Keaton Dudek, very efficient. Four rushes for 21 yards. So I bumped that up probably to 32 after those that last run a minute ago for a touchdown. And, of course, big old Jamal Long, two catches, 60 yards, and a touchdown. A casual 30 yards a catch, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> but but now, now a big third down for both teams. It, it feels like the, the game's just kind of hanging in the air right now, being ready to be redefined by either team at this moment. Here is Barlow facing a big third down and 11. Four wide, two to either side. Gets him to jump off sides again. They will blow the play dead. And if you're Barlow, you actually may be a little frustrated that they blew that play dead. Yeah, it's going to be a full encroachment. As soon as you make contact, yep. the play gets blown dead. But yeah, you know he, he loves those free plays. Yes, he does. So that will actually... Offside. 53 of the defense. <laughs> third down. James Christie Jr., gets caught off sides, and you got to think maybe that's one of the things you should have talked about in that huddle. Watch out for the hard count. Yeah, watch out for the hard count because now Sagu has a whole bunch of more tricks in their bag for third and six. Barlow looks to the side. Isn't it crazy how much a five-yard penalty can feel like it, a momentum shifter? Yeah, it, it, crazy. It's, it's just because of what you can draw up now. You have so many different route trees you can run. You can even run the ball on the ground if you want to. Barlow pumps. He's going to take a shot deep. He's got a man off his hands and a huge hit on the sideline. That will bring up fourth down. and.
Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the SAGU Sports Network. Thanks so much for joining us today and for tuning in for this presentation on this beautiful Saturday of our Southwestern Assemblies of God University Lady Lions Volleyball. Today, you'll see that the Lady Lions are hosting the MACU, or Mid-American Christian University, Evangels. Uh, last night, also on the road, the Evangels took a loss in Fort Worth against the number two ranked team in the SAC currently, Texas Wesleyan. Today's matchup, as you will soon see, will be a great test to the Lady Lions team. Mac U is now 3-2 and two in conference play and 11-5 overall. And based on the, the both records of both teams, it's sure to be a great matchup today. Before we get started, I'm going to throw us back down to the courtside view for pregame festivities, starting lineups, and national anthem. You're watching the SAGU Sports Network. for a first down, two catches on the day, two catches for his career for Connor Ladner, and they are both huge receptions. Yeah, this is almost a punt and has to completely go up and fight for it, rip it out of Isaac Gowdy's hand. They fake the hand, or they do hand it off again, this time brought down from behind by Drake Rodriguez, and another good chunk of yards there on first down is gonna make it second and six. And we get a timeout by Coach Smith and this Lions team. And they majors are moving and they have momentum. And they are majors are moving and they have momentum. And they are cruising on offense right now. Yeah, for those of you who are just joining us. We apologize for the technical difficulties uh, there for a second. But uh, the, to sum up the, the Millsaps drive here, uh, Eight, play, eight yards after after one play after another yeah. it is able to get them to drive down the field. And we just saw an incredible pitch and catch from Caleb Tonson to Connor Ladner. Connor Ladner went up and got it over the defensive back and moved the chains. And just like that, the majors are in the red zone. Yeah, this Sagu drive, just took a timeout. This drive started at the 27-yard line, and truly it has just been eight-yard chunks the whole way down the field, something that we have not seen the majors do at any point in this game. Even their first touchdown drive was a big play, kind of bookended by some penalties. But this has been a dominant offensive drive. And with 6.09 left in the half, a game that was 21-0 just a few short minutes ago has completely shifted with all the momentum going in the majors' favor. Coming out of the timeout, it will be second and five after that first down run by Shanklin. They will hand it off to Shanklin. Shanklin looking for some room on the outside. Oh, ball. It is a loose ball. There is a fumble, and it looks like the majors fell back on top of it. So no harm there after a gain of one, third and four here for Millsaps. And one of the things we have not seen so far today, we do not necessarily know how their, their kicking game is because their punter is their place kick holder as well, Ethan Clapatch. We've seen him with some pretty good punts, and we did see him punch through an extra point, but this is not this is not gimme territory right here for, for any sort of field goal. So we'll see what they decide to do here on third and four. And you gotta think you wanna punch it into the end zone. Yeah, yeah you gotta get touchdowns. Keeps it, Thompson. Falling forward, did he get enough? He is awfully close, he did not. So it will be fourth and one, and I don't see any movement from that sideline over there for the majors, and they will indeed go for it here on first down, or fourth down rather. Yeah, that, no, that's a play you draw up knowing you're going for it on fourth down. Great tackle there Under by center Taz Allen. is Thompson, he's gonna keep it himself, get pushed forward. There is a stalemate there. Did he get enough? The way they are marking they him did. right now, he is a yard short of the first down. We'll wait for the official ruling. I don't know if they're going to want to measure it. And they will indeed say a stop for Sagu wow. on fourth down and one, not even inches, on one. They went with the quarterback keeper to Caleb Thompson. He got a push from behind by Nick Shanklin, but a good job by that Sagu defensive front anchored by Keandre Belcher and Drake Rodriguez to halt that momentum. 
and get possession back for the Sagu offense. Just no give on that defensive line. On those fourth and ones, those quarterback sneaks can just feel automatic sometimes. They stood their ground. And what a huge stand after the majors were just rolling, looking the best they have on offense all day. Getting out there and making the stand at the biggest moment, for, uh, maintaining that two score lead, getting the ball back in your offense's hands. It still, it still feels like the, the game has changed a little bit, but what a massive moment from the defense to at least disrupt for a moment this Majors rally. So Sagu now with 448 to play in the first half, comes out with two to his left, or two to his right rather. We've seen them run that option look out of this formation. They will hand it off to Dudek. Dudek bounces it outside, cuts it upfield, makes a man miss and has enough for the first down. Keaton Dudek has been incredible on first down, picking up almost 10 to 12 yards each carry on first. And whenever you throw him to those corners, he just has the speed. He has the speed and the awareness. Bumps outside there, sees the lane, does a nice cut back in. He's just quick. He's the guy you want attacking those edges. New set of downs here for Sagu. You got to think they want points here to try to get momentum back on their side. They will kick off to start the second half. So you do kind of have to start thinking about that here as far as your clock manager goes. Down the sidelines, Jamal Long brought in for a first down and then some. The back shoulder pass to Jamal Long and the adjustment. Did he bring that in with one hand? Uh, he might it's have. Tough to, let's take a look. You're going to get a look, good look at it here. Perfectly delivered ball from Barlow. Uh, he and did. He, he put that right hand out there and brought it in. Wow. Yeah. Does a great job of corralling it into his chest. Barlow to Long is still working right now. It almost worked on the last drive, too, just off his fingertips. But they get the ball up to midfield, trying to regain the early game dominance that they had going. Two plays, almost 50 yards here for Sagu this drive. Here's Barlow. Double stack. He's going to fake the handoff, go quick out to his receiver, and it's dropped a little bit out of his reach. There was a quick throw. It's going to be second and ten. Yeah, just a little bit too much on it for Adrian Rao or Darian Rao to pull in. Nice quick pressure from the majors too. Do not allow him to make any adjustments to haul it in. The, the majors they've been playing fast. They've been playing fast oh, on yeah. defense. They fly to the ball. Yep. You know they've been getting in Barlow's face. It really was just a full credit to Sagu's offense how they were able to go down and score on those first three drives. They just kept making plays happen. The majors, though, have seemed to settle down a little bit more. They're making more plays. They're getting to the ball a little bit more and making life a lot tougher on the Sagu offense. Here's Barlow on second and ten. Quick across the middle looking for Blaine Rowe, and it's just behind him, and he couldn't bring it in. So that brings up on third and ten in back-to-back -back plays that were quick stoppages, and the clock has not moved very much here uh, for Sagu. So this is a big third down. And that is a first down and more. Blaine Rowe is probably going to get down to the 30 if they're able to make that connection. But instead, another third and long coming up right here at midfield. Sagu's faced a couple of these. They've converted a few. They've had to punt on the last few of them, though. After three straight scoring drives, they've punted twice in a row, and now they need a big 10 yards here to avoid a third straight punt. Barlow with Busby in the backfield. He's going to roll out to his right. Looking for anybody. He throws it back across his body. Brought in for the first down. He went to the to his receiver, Mike Mouton. Went up and got it. Brought it in. And Sagu once again moves the chain. And Mouton broke this early. It was just a matter of time before Barlow finally looks across and sees him. Mouton had been sitting there for a while. And a huge third and ten conversion down to the 32-yard line. Barlow with his legs keeping the play alive just long enough, and then one to look across the field. A lot of times quarterbacks get so trapped at that corner they have to force it to the sideline, looks across the field, says, hey, I wonder if one of my guys has found a way to get open, and there was Mike Mouton. And we get a Millsaps timeout. So that will be their second of the half with three minutes left to play, Sagu moving and Sagu threatening. Probably a two-factor timeout there. You want to settle back down. You know, Sagu's had some success on this drive on offense focusing on what was working on those last two drives, but also maintain the clock. Uh, the majors will have the opportunity for that double dip potentially. Let's go in for a live look in now at the Schaefer Center. Like I said, we've got two ball games going on today. We've got 
Mac Yu taking on Sagu over at the Schaefer Center. First for, set. For some Sooner Athletic Conference volleyball. Like I said, we're, we're a two-channel network now. Uh, it's Sagu Sports <laughs> Network and Sagu Sports Network 2, which is funny because I remember we used to run this thing off of uh, chewing gum and, uh, and spare wire. <laughs> we, we, we just, you know, would film the plays and somehow broadcast them into the air. It was, it was insane. Shout out to our partner over there, Devin Webb, calling this game solo, her first solo broadcast for the Sagu Lady Lions. Coach Moore has his Sagu Lady Lions off to a hot, a hot start this season as we bring it back always to Lumpkin Stadium. Always such a reliable squad over there, that volleyball team. And I'm glad you introduced her because I would have said her old last name. I, so. <laughs> I almost do every time. I've done games with her with her maiden name and her new name. I almost do it every time. Almost do it every time. Here we go. First and ten here for Sagu. Barlow, he is back to pass. Looking on a wheel route to Blaine Rowe, and it's intercepted on the outside. What coverage there. And Tim, I think it's your it man, is. Jet Coleman, comes down with the interception over wow. Blaine Rowe. And that is the momentum shifter that they needed are the majors. That's not only a momentum shifter, it is a gut punch for the Lions as Jet Coolman defender of the nine rings i'm just gonna make up a title each time with a huge what? interception his second in two weeks and this one stops what was looking like a for sure lion scoring drive and gives the majors that chance for a double dip a score at the end of the first half and at the second half and down two possessions that's all they need we have not said jet coleman's name yet today which is Sagu's just a actually, shame. They've been staying away they, from I, his side of the field. They really field. have. That was one of the first times we've truly seen him targeted one-on-one. -on -one. And you see why. He makes a <laughs> big play. Long field for the majors, but they'll take it. They're going to hand it off, looking for some running room, but Sagu's defense does a good job of swarming to the football, allowing a short gain there on first down. Call that a gain of three. Clock will continue running under three minutes to play. It was Byron Phillips getting his first action of the afternoon. He sheds off a few tacklers, just enough to fall forward for that extra yard. But it'll still be second and seven. Millsaps not in any hurry, and I understand why right here, because they do want to milk some of this clock in case they go three and out. They don't want Sagu to have plenty of time themselves. They will hand it off again, looking for any sort of running room. But Sagu's defense is, again, the word that to use is just swarming. They allowed nothing there, stayed home, good contain, and brought them down for no gain. Yeah, every single guy that misses, there's another one there. Just spreading across, keep winning those battles up front. Even when you get shed, there's two more guys to come in and make the stop. You know, big third down here. So I can get a quick stop. They can call a timeout, get good field position back, try to erase that interception from their memory. 145 left to play here in the first half. Millsaps facing a third and seven. Back to pass is Thompson. He lets it go across the middle of the field, and it's broken up. Good job there on the backside coverage by Damaris Heron. And that brings up a three and out. And the punting unit, you'd think, will come out onto the field, and they I, will. Yeah, I can't imagine. Uh, a little bit of a conversation there. I didn't think it would take that long to get the punting unit out on the field. But with 135 left to go in the first half, Sagu will regain possession. So no harm done on that turnover. So it doesn't lead to points. Yeah. It, it stops what was a very good drive, but the defense does exactly what they needed to. Let me say, Heron's been having a good game. He has been in on a lot of plays there, and that was a huge disruption there, breaking that pass up to get the ball back in your hands, prevent any scoring from the majors. And it'll be interesting to see how, what Sagu does with this last 90 seconds. A high punt end over end. A pretty good punt, but an opportunity for a return here. Cuts it back down past the 45 and brought down, and that is where Sagu will take over possession. Adrian Rowell, who we saw him last week, opening the second half with a huge kick return, which allowed Sagu to score and start to cut into that lead against, a lead against Ottawa. So we see the electric ability to return kicks for Rowell. So in the end, that interception, all it did is cost Sagu 15 yards in about a minute and a half. They will still have a minute 24, plenty of time to get down. They have two timeouts. So they still have plenty of time at this point to get down the field, set up for a chance to score. At this point, you've gone three straight drives without points too. So when you have good field position like this, even with only a minute 24 or so to work with, 
need to find a way to get something to regain that offensive momentum you had going on early in the game. Bunch formation here for Barlow. We saw this formation work last week against Ottawa. Fakes a handoff. He's back to pass. Clean pocket. He gets rid of it. Quick pitch and catch there goes out of bounds. It's going to be a three-yard gain on the outside by Zachariah Johnson. Little play action, just enough to pull off the defender. And Johnson wisely gets out of bounds. So a gain of three, almost no time burned. Play's getting called in here. Still they got, got plenty of time to do it. Plenty of time on the play clock. It's the advantage of getting out of bounds. You're not in any hurry. Draw up the right play. At the very least, you want to walk away with a chance to get a field goal. There's Barlow with three out wide to his left. Takes a snap, hands it off to Dudek. Dudek following his blockers, keeping the feet moving. He's not going to have enough for the first down, and Sagu will take a timeout, and they will face a third and one. Dudek does a pretty good job of just staying behind where he needs to be here. Almost had his knee go down there, but kept it up. And it will be third and short. Big moment here really for the majors. Absolutely. Uh, they, they, yep. You really don't even want to give up a field goal here. You're down two possessions. You're getting the ball first to start the second half. You've proven that your offense can move. You don't want to even go down 24 to 7. Another look in here at the volleyball game. Sagu up 10 to 7 right now over the Mid-America Christian University Evangels. Yep, I was. I, I, yeah, I could see it, the, the the wheels turning. I, it took me a second. I almost said Crusaders because it's the Evangel Crusaders. Yep, and it's the Mid American Christian <laughs> University Evangels. So again, almost, almost mixed it up. A historic day here for the Sagu Sports Network. Dual broadcasts has not been done to this point for the Sagu Sports Network, and it, it, it's 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 a good thing to do because that Hank Moore led volleyball team is ah. just incredible to start the season. I mean, he really has a 20 plus year run of just putting out competitive teams every single year. So here is Barlow on third and two after the Dudek run and then the timeout. We'll hand it off Dudek to the outside. He's got the first down and then some with some room to run. That's gonna stop the clock as they get set. It'll move the chains and Sagu now inside the 30. And that's all speed and quickness. The majors are actually going to get in the backfield. Look like for a second he might be there, but when he's that fast, even when you're on him, he's going to find a way to get to that corner. Five wide here for Barlow. We are under a minute to play here in the first half. Barlow takes a snap. He's back to pass. Looking to the flats. He's got his man. That is Dudik. Dudik throws off a tackler, has the first down, and more importantly for the Lions, ducks out of bounds and stops that clock and saves that last timeout. Got a timeout in your pocket. You're at the 16-yard line now. This has been a very well-executed two-minute drill on a short field. Dude, spinning out of a tackler and wisely just heading out of bounds. 45 seconds left to go. At this point, the clock almost isn't even a factor when you still have Absolutely. a timeout. You're Absolutely. only looking at 16 yards. Barring a sack, the clock is, exactly. is your friend yes. right now. Yes. Yeah. So here is Barlow, double stack either side of him, left and right. Dudek in the backfield sends a man in motion. He will hand it off to Dudek. Dudek cuts it back up the middle. He's got some room to run down past the five, down at the one-yard line. So Sagu's got first and goal from the one. And I, this, is, this is almost like a quarterback run. He hops up here, looks, bounces, takes it up the middle. Timeout, Sagu. That will be their final timeout as the clock would have started on the set of the ball. So 38 seconds, Sagu takes their last timeout. You got to think maybe this is uh, Coach Smith trying to draw something up here to get a possibly a one-play touchdown. Get in the end zone. Don't worry about the clock. Now that you have no timeouts, now's the time to draw up your best one-yard play that you have in the playbook. Yeah, with 38 seconds left, you have enough time to, to run and still get back on the line of scrimmage and run a few more plays. Either way, what another great run from Keaton Dudek right there. Like I said, he almost runs like a quarterback throws. He gets that ball, kind of hops, and surveils the field, sees the hole, sees the gaps coming in. It's almost like he sees things developing the way a quarterback oh, absolutely. does. Absolutely. He sees the different lanes that are going to emerge. He rides them perfectly for a big run down to the one-yard line. And Sagu looking to push this back to a three-score game. After, for a moment there, the Majors were making some yeah. serious noise, uh, making some interceptions, but a big fourth and one stop on defense, as well as in a three and out right afterwards, has kept Sagu ahead. Now gives them a chance to push that lead 
back up to a commanding one heading into the half. They bring out the heavy package here on first and goal from the one. Again, no timeouts. They are stacking that right side of the line. We saw this last week. You know what? I've, it I, looks like a Sagu offensive lineman did end up jumping, so it could be a false start here. False start. Oh. And that is a killer. Five yards. Still first down. First and goal from the one. You feel like you can just run up the middle a few times. You're going to get a touchdown. First and goal from the six changes everything. Another pre-snap penalty just bites the Lions at a very inopportune time. It changes the entire dimension here. First and goal from the six. Everything's a little bit different. First and goal from the one. Pound out the middle. Hand it off. You got some throws here. Now, of course, you still got your two receivers on the corner, and one of them is Jamal Long. I'm looking Long's way right now. He's got one-on-one -on -one coverage at the top of your screen. They come out in the same formation. We'll see if they send the man in motion. They will. So the same exact formation here on first and goal from the six. There it is. He's back to throw, back shoulder pass. It is swatted away. Good coverage there on the outside. We've called his name a couple of times today. That was Jacoby Howard yeah. up to the task with Jamal Long. Yeah, Howard's had a good game over there. That is not an easy assignment. Or rather, not, I'm sorry, not Jamal Long. That was Mike Mouton on the outside. Now Jamal Long kept, or checks back into the game. So they brought him off the field because it looks like they were going to go yeah. run heavy on first down and no need really to have him out there. But uh, now you're facing second to goal from the six. Now you get your big bodied receiver out there. Maybe take another shot here. 34 seconds left to play here in the first half. Sagu threatening up 21 to seven, looking to extend this lead to a three score game. They will hand it off. Dudek breaks a tackle, trying to cut it up field. He gets into the end zone. The shiftiness of Keaton Dudek, and he's able to find the end zone for his second touchdown of the afternoon. And Sagu, again, Barring an extra point, we'll go up 28 to seven. He has to fight the whole way, but something that happened before the play helped spring this, and it's because of Jamal Long. Jamal Long going on up top there, as we thought he was a moment ago with the one-on-one -on -one coverage, forced the majors to move Ryan Takes from the center to go out to double cover him. That dropped one fewer guy in the middle, which allowed that, I mean, it's impossible to know exactly how it would have all sussed out. But that gave Dudek perhaps the one fewer guy he needed to beat. And he goes into the end zone. And with 28 seconds left, the Lions take back control of this one after felt like a little bit of tug of war there for a little bit with it 21 it, 7. it did yep. I, I said it a couple times it felt like the game was trying to be defined and somebody needed to be def somebody needed to define it and the lions perhaps define it there taking a short field with a minute and a half to play executing a great touchdown drive second touchdown run of the day for keaton dudick and they are back up 28 to 7. Kieran Woodley, a perfect four for four on the day for extra points. Mr. Automatic, in a day and age where you see extra points missed so often, it's nice to have a guy you can count on to get down there and, and not miss a kick yeah. when you need him most. Those extra points are so crucial. And Saga goes up, again, three scores, 28-7, back out to that 21-point lead that felt like it was, like you said, a little danger there, a little bit of a stalemate that we had there for a good chunk here of the, of the second quarter. Woodley's kickoff is a good one as it gets over the head of the return man into the end zone, and that will be a touchback. So Millsaps will come out with 28 seconds, ball on the 25. They do, however, get possession to start the second half. So we'll see what they decide to do here. I believe they have one timeout remaining. Yeah, it's tough back at the 25. You'd love to generate something here. You do get the ball first. You're down 21. You'd love to generate a little something. You know you've got the receivers that can make the plays, but you also really want to avoid a big mistake. They come out and they throw re three receivers wide to the right of Caleb Thompson. So we'll see what they decide to do here on first down. And they will hand it off to the outside, cutting it, and he's going to get brought down for a loss and then gets thrown down out of bounds. The handoff that time to Montreal Felix. It's Dalton Spencer who's just going to pursue across the field, allow no room to run, and that will be 
the last play of the first half. Yep. The clock did continue to run after that play. So that will do it for half number one here between the Millsaps Majors and your hometown Sagu Lions. Sagu going into halftime with a three touchdown lead up 28-7 here over the Majors in really what felt like a game that could get out of hand quickly. Uh, Millsaps did a good job of sticking around, hanging around and, and getting a touchdown of their own to cut it to a two score game. But a good job by Sagu to answer back to close the half there with a touchdown of their own and extend that lead back out to three scores. Yeah, the, obviously right there for a moment, the majors were down 21-7. They were driving, but just as crucial as we talked about that five-yard penalty let the majors back in the game, that fourth and one stop was so huge there at the 13-yard line to keep the Lions safely ahead by two scores and now up by three. Sagu's defense has been up to the task today. Our sideline reporter, Jazz Williams, is with defensive coordinator Jared Hutchins. Jazz, down to you. Coach, you've held Millsaps to seven points, almost got a couple interceptions. How would you assess your defense right now? Oh, they're playing hard and they're playing aggressive. We've got to do a few things to, to be more uh, sound up front and uh, eliminate more of their run game and then just finish plays in the back end, you know, Drop the few, we need to we need to capitalize and finish the play and, and go ahead and get the turnover. What message are you going to give the team going into the second half to start off strong? Let's put a full game together. We need to do that. We need to do it from start to finish, and, and that's really about it. I mean, just stay disciplined, do your job, and, and let's finish more plays. Thanks, Coach. Back to you, Adam. Thank you, Jazz. Thank you, Coach Hutchins. Don't go anywhere. I think, Tim, I believe we're in store for another good half of football here. This Millsaps team looks like they've got some fight in them. Don't go anywhere. Sagu leading 28-7 to here at the half. Half number two coming your way right here on the Sagu Sports Network. AGCU, we are committed to forging relationships centered around faith and finance. Our purpose is to provide financial solutions to help you succeed while we tithe 10% of our annual earnings to ministry and community organizations. Your mercy is never ending, your kindness never fading, Jesus, you're always with me. You're Michael W. Smith returns in an intimate evening, September 30th, 7 p.m., Southwestern Assemblies of God University in Waxahachie. All your favorite hits and a night of worship. Tickets on sale now at sagu.edu slash mws. Don't miss all your favorite hits and a night of worship with Michael W. Smith live. Michael W. Smith returns in an intimate evening, September 30th, 7 p.m., Southwestern Assemblies of God University in Waxahachie. Tickets on sale now at sagu.edu slash mws. The NAI level is highly competitive. Um, I know that a lot of NCAA schools will have opening round games with a lot of NAI schools, and those are very close games a lot of times. And um, it's a highly competitive level, and it's been a great, great situation for me. And I think it's a great situation for a lot of my teammates and a lot of my peers.
Honey, have you applied to that school yet? Not really into purple. Sagu, never say no to a lion. At Southwestern, we endeavor to offer more than the average college curriculum. Producing men and women whose lives are pleasing to God. And that's worth everything. Where online makes really good sense is when you're kind of not the typical, I just graduated from high school and I want to have a college experience. I chose distance education because I was busy. I mean, I knew that our lives were kind of all over the place, everything that we were doing, and I wanted something that was flexible. My degree at SEGU allowed me to still be a mom and an educator and get my degree online. I was able to tuck my kids into bed and get everything that I needed to get done. And while laundry was going, I was studying. If you have any questions, certainly give me a call and shoot me an email and I'll be glad to help any way I can. We have an asynchronous program, so videos are going, students are accessing the course on their own schedule, which is a, a convenience of online education. So the online provides the way to get the academic uh, credit that you need to advance your career path, advance um, your learning and your skills. Well, a lot of what we were doing with our resident assistants was preparing them to teach their halls. And then, of course, I'd have the opportunity to teach as well. So I was training, but then I was also teaching the whole dorm. And so I found that a lot of the tools that I was getting from my classes was really helping me to prepare my RAs and to prepare myself to minister to our students. My master's degree in education at SAGU allowed me to have a bigger influence on more than just students, but also educators. With the door that this degree opened, I was able to take this position that really didn't exist before I graduated and I was able to move into that. In SAGU's philosophy, we want to connect students with a faculty member that is curating the content and they are providing the content we feel is important for that particular course the way that it is presented in SAGU's distinctive. I loved the way that they would give you quality feedback. It's not just a grade, but I want to know what you think about my work. My professor was fabulous, just was always there for me that entire semester, and I was able to graduate exactly when I expected to. The fact is, there is no back row in an online classroom. You can't get in the back of the class. You're either online and engaged, or you're not doing the work. The number one thing is their passion for students. You know, the customer service here, they're going to help you get across that finish line and do everything they can do to help you get there. 
You know, this is a place where if you've already in your career, you know what you want to do, and you just need that extra you know, skill set, you need that help to prepare you to be more successful, this is a very practical place to get your degree. Is your church looking to build a new facility, purchase property, renovate your current building, or set up a capital campaign? The North Texas District Church Loan Fund can help. The NTD Church Loan Fund has helped over 200 Assembly of God churches in the state of Texas expand their ministries through loans and investments. We know this can be a challenging task, and we want to make it easier for you. Looking for investment options? Invest with a purpose. Investing with the NTD Church Loan Fund combines competitive rates and flexible terms with Kingdom Impact. Let's build the Kingdom of God together. Visit churchloanfund.ag today. What we're looking for as students in the uh, church leadership program and any of our vocational ministry programs is somebody who has a passion for Christ, a passion for people, uh, somebody who uh, has an element of seriousness, but they'll be transparent and be people of integrity. I'm looking for students that are going to invest their lives in the life of a student that says, I know how tough adolescence can be. This degree is tailor-made for that unique life, uh, trying to help individuals really learn all that goes into the unique realities of church leadership. What we've done is uh, make this degree uh, a great combination. They're able to pick and choose various ministry classes and, and really get a wide range, a well-rounded view of church life. It, it's like build your own degree if you feel the, the desire or the calling. We're equipping students that if in 10 years they say, well, God's moving me out of youth ministry, out of children's ministry, well, they can become some other type of associate. They can go into pastoral ministry. We're uh, increasing the internship component that goes alongside this degree. And so, uh, you know, this gives a, a good potential. A student can be plugged into a single church for three semesters. They could be plugged into three different churches. If it's children and family classes, then for example, there's one called Creative Methods, ballooning, juggling, clowning, all of those kinds of things that we're going to cover. We also have a course called Issues in Childhood and Family Life. How do we do care for people who've gone through abuse and neglect and divorce and all the tough things that come in life, especially in the lives of kids? 
I discovered that along with other things that I had been uh, doing. And in pastoral leadership, they're going to get courses such as ministerial ethics. They're going to get courses like pastoral leadership itself. But then they'll also pick up things like hermeneutics and systematic theology to go along with uh, preaching courses and uh, pastoral counseling courses. They're going to be learning, you know, some of the practice of ministry, certainly, you know, how to communicate, how to lead a service, how to, you know, develop ministry, but they're also going to learn a lot about dealing with people, things like how to help a church turn around one that's been struggling or how to plant a new ministry. Whenever I talk to freshmen, I say, don't think that you're purchasing a four-year degree said you're investing in a lifelong relationship. Ministry can be a very lonely place, and our role is that they know they always have a friend at Southwestern. Ministry is, is not necessarily the easiest thing they'll get into, but it's something that they commit themselves to, not because of their, uh, it's a profession, but because it's a, it's a passion in their heart. Jesus gave us a lot, lot of indications of that, you know, showing us that uh, in his kingdom, leadership will operate differently than it does in the world around us. The sense of servant leadership, uh, working with individuals um, who maybe at times are in deep distress, trauma, great need. So degrees in church leadership are there to help address that. Michael W. Smith returns in an intimate evening, September 30th, 7 p.m., Southwestern Assemblies of God University in Waxahachie. All your favorite hits and a night of worship. Tickets on sale now at sagu.edu slash mws. Don't miss all your favorite hits and a night of worship with Michael W. Smith live. Time to go to Hogwarts. Sagu, never say no to a lion. This is a faith venture. We may yet face challenges, but I want you to know something. Ours is a worthy mission. It's a kingdom mission, and the Pentecostal church needs SAGU. Our Native American churches need SAGU AIC. Let's persevere to victory. May each of us maintain the reputation of one who knows their stuff. They expect us to be the best, May this institution always have that reputation. This institution deserves the best for me and you because this is God's ministry and He deserves the best. The students that God has entrusted to me and you deserve our best because we have accepted the responsibility of mentor and discipler. Our churches and parents of students deserve our best because they've entrusted their children to us as stewards, many at great personal financial sacrifice. If we strive for and achieve excellence, then we will be rewarded with a harvest of students in the days to come. May we never forget that any combination of the most effective leadership traits that does not include spiritual character are temporal and will provide no enduring legacy. That is the one thing that is going to distinguish us and give us the ability to make a difference in the days to come. 
We desperately need God's presence. They need to see us model a spirit-filled life. Oh God, give us revival. And let it begin with me. Let it begin with you. We each need to pray that prayer. May God grant us the skill to develop a visionary plan that will bear much fruit for the kingdom of God. May we never lose the capacity to envision and believe for a big dream. As population increases, God will most certainly call more men and women to take the gospel around the world. Therefore, spirit-filled Pentecostal institutions are needed now more than ever. School districts, businesses, governmental roles, and all kinds of professions need even more godly men and women to fill positions with excellence as salt and light. And there's no better place to train marketplace ministers than right here. We need to get as many kids in these doors as we possibly can. It's God's will for us to rise up in faith. May your heart for God and personal faith increase. May your influence and favor with students rise to a level you've never experienced. May your families experience health and peace, and may your needs be met. May God miraculously provide for our campus. May God grant us creativity and wisdom and discernment and understanding and favor. Together, if we will work and give God the chance, we're going to see awesome things happen on this campus. Our best days are ahead of us. Welcome back to the Sagu Sports Network, half number two between the Millsaps Majors and the Sagu Lions coming your way right here. If you're just joining us, Sagu started out this game three straight drives with touchdowns, resulting in touchdowns, to go up 21-0. Millsaps, then we had a little bit of a stalemate, but Millsaps came down and they were able to get put their first points on the board, making it 21-7. And then again, a little bit of a lull in the action, but Sagu able to drive down and put up seven more points before heading into the half with that 28 to seven, three touchdown score lead. The majors will start off the second half with possession as Sagu elected to receive the opening kickoff. Now is a good time to remind you, if you are not already, follow us on all of our social media accounts, Facebook, Sagu Sports Network, Twitter, at Sagu Sports Network, and then, of course, on YouTube, where you may or may not be watching right now, probably are watching right now, Sagu Sports Network. Give us a follow. We are insanely close to 1,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel. So if you have not already, hit that subscribe button as we are underway with the second half kickoff. And it is another good one from Kieran Woodley as it goes over the head of the return man. And the majors will begin their first drive here of the second half from the 25. Yeah, and after a little bit of that stalemate when they were down 21-7, had the ball inside the Lions' red zone, it definitely stings for Millsaps to be back down by three scores. When you were so close to making it a one possession game, you got the big interception from Jet Coolman, the defender of Earth, and you, <laughs> you weren't able to capitalize off of that, you had to punt it back. So you find yourself uh. back down by three scores. You've seen you can shift momentum though. You have the entire second half. You had a good second half last week too, or two weeks ago when you played. Get out there and try to make something happen. First play from scrimmage for the majors will be a handoff, and it is swallowed up by Drake Rodriguez, Nick Shanklin, on the carry for three yards there on first down. And we saw them start to establish a little bit more of a good rushing attack towards the end of the first half. It mo mostly everything else is through the air. They're picking up some yards on the ground. And you really need to do that because you need to give Thompson a little bit of that safety net to know that he has a little more time to throw and can rely on some play actions. Thompson will go back to throw facing pressure, completes a pass across the middle, and then breaking a tackle for some more yardage, getting spun around and finally brought down was his receiver across the middle. That was Scott, or rather Nick Hayes with the reception. First catch we've seen from Hayes, and yeah, he shows some speed and elusiveness. Stays up after that throw. That probably wasn't the best idea. Loses a few yards off of it, but a big conversion there from Thompson to Hayes. Moves the chains for the majors. So here is Thompson. Sends a man of motion just to his other side. We'll hand the ball off, and there is nothing doing for Shanklin. He is able to get a yard, maybe two. That Sagu defensive line standing tall. 
getting a stop there on first down. It's been tough to go up the middle on this Sagu defense. They've made a couple of really big stands, consistently held the rushing attack to not too much damage. You're going to give them two full yards on that one, but either way, does a good job of keeping that first down run from getting the three or four yards you absolutely want to get when you run on first and 10. Thompson looks over to the sideline to maybe change the play here after seeing what the defensive alignment would be. Second and eight here for Thompson. Shanklin in the backfield, four out wide, two to either side. Will hand it off to Shanklin. Shanklin lowers the shoulder, is able to churn forward for four yards there on second down. That'll make it third and about four here. And across midfield, down by 21. I don't know if you're not drawing up plays here on third down with a fourth down in mind. It, you know, we saw them pass up a few opportunities in the first half on fourth and one, fourth and two. Then they went for it on fourth and one to the 13. You're down 21. You got a little bit of a hill to climb here, so I wouldn't be surprised to see a couple of plays right here in a row if you can't pick it up on first down. Here is Thompson. He's back to pass. He steps up. He's going to tuck it and run with it. He's got the first down. He slides down just shy of the 35, down at the 36-yard line. So Thompson getting it done with his feet, and he moves the chains again for the majors. Second or third time we've seen Thompson uh, tuck and run with it. That's obviously a design pass. He's not looking to run there, but nobody open. Does a good job of scanning the field, sees he has the space to take it. So go pick up those four yards yourself, and then some down to the 36-yard line. The majors are moving. First and 10 here for Millsaps. Fakes the handoff. He pumps. Has a man deep across the middle. Brought in for a touchdown. The Majors take their first drive of the second half. Caleb Thompson in the face of pressure is able to get it to his man, Moise Tezo, for the touchdown down the middle of the field. And just like that, it is back down to a two-score game. And that pump fake from Thompson was beautiful. Froze the defense up a little bit, then tossed it right on the to Tezzo, who was breaking free. Exactly the start here from the major from the majors. A three-minute touchdown drive going down the full field, looking good the whole way. Probably the most complete drive we've seen from them in this game. Their first touchdown. That kick is good. Wow, that was close. A low line drive kick there off the foot of Cameron Beal. Actually, the place kicker for the majors on that attempt. It does end up going through, again, cutting it to a two-score game, 28-14. Yeah, probably, and again, that pump fake, and then Thompson unleashing with pressure. Man in his face drops it in there. But I would say that's the most complete drive we've seen from the majors in this game. Their first touchdown drive was aided by some penalties and started at the 40-yard line. Didn't have to go very far. Both of them, though, have ended on long touchdown passes from Caleb Thompson. He, str he struggled at times today to dial it in. And but what's that do for the confidence of the offense? Oh, huge, huge. Yeah. To, to know that your wide receiver, uh, to, that your quarterback has dialed it in with his wide receivers. Early on, he was under throwing a few and throwing it a little bit high. However, now he seems to have dialed in a little bit more and is putting it on the money. So after the quick three minute drive, that results in a touchdown for the Millsaps Majors. Again, they have cut this down to a two-score lead in a ball game where they were down 21-nothing. And unfortunately for Millsaps, we don't play by Madden rules here. No 21 skunks when it comes to, to NAIA and Division III football. That kick will go out of bounds. So that's not how you want to answer after a touchdown drive with a free kick out of bounds. So Sagu will have very good field position here. Zagu offense had kind of found themselves again towards the end of the first half after three straight drives with a three and out, a punt, and an interception. Even on the interception, the drive had been moving. And then they executed very well on that two-minute drill to get the big touchdown to put them back up by three scores. Free kick out of bounds. The kicking team. The ball will be placed on the 35-yard line. First down. So Sagu will take over possession at the 35 due to the free kick out of, out of bounds penalty against the majors. So good field position here for Sagu as they look to answer back with a score of their own after the long touchdown pass from Caleb Thompson to Moise Tezzo. Here is Barlow. He's got Kevin Busby in the backfield with him. Little counter action, hands it off to Busby. Busby spins off a tackler, keeps his feet, tries to keep going forward. He's spinning, and he's finally piled upon. He's going to have a gain of three yards there. A lot of action there for three yards, Tim. 
and a lot of fight. You love seeing that on the ground. Now, occasionally you get a little bit worried when you're fighting that much and that much traffic, the ball's gonna get punched out or something. But you love seeing these running backs just find ways of staying up. And each time he fought, he got about one more yard. It's about a loss of one, into a gain of one, into a gain of three. So he just <laughs> kept fighting forward. You like seeing a second running back start to emerge too with Busby. Oh, absolutely. You, you always absolutely. love having that second option. And Duduk, of course, has been great. But you love when you see a second running back that can go out there and scrap for some yards as well. Here's Barlow. He hands it off. Here's Busby. Busby has some blockers in front of him. Guiding traffic is Busby, and he's going to get driven out of bounds after a gain of four. So that makes it third and short here for the Sagu offense. And you got to think this third down is, is very, very important because Millsaps has to have gained a little bit of confidence after that touchdown drive. And a three and out here would only add some more fuel to that fire. Absolutely. When you're only up two scores, the, the game can change and be tied in a matter of 90 seconds. So, if, yeah, facing a third and call it a, a long three, at first look, he might have been able to pick up more yards, but the majors did a good job of stretching the field and knocking him out of bounds before he was able to cut back in. Two setbacks for the Lions. They might, might elect to keep it on the ground here and see if they can pound it for three more yards. Barlow. Keeps it himself, fakes the pitch, and he's upfield, and he's got the first down, and he is down past midfield into Majors territory, and that's the second time we've seen that play work almost exactly the same. That fake pitch results in extra yardage. Old school, out of the history books, triple option, and Barlow is going to do an amazing job, again, of that fake pitch at the outside to the second option. The defense bites just enough to give him a hole. Barlow scampers through it. Big third down conversion for the Lions. They push it into Millsap's territory. Barlow taking his time getting the play in from the sideline. You got to think they're okay with taking any seconds they can off the clock here. Keep this Millsap squad at bay. Here's Barlow on first and 10. He's going to hand it off. Here's Busby around the outside. And he gets brought down after a short gain there on first down. Call it a gain of four. Make it second and six. And I'm not sure the Lions are running the clock out yet by any means, but if anything, it's keeping that defense on the field. You've won against this defense more than you've lost. Keep them on the field. Keep their hands in the dirt. Uh, even if you're not running active plays at them, the fact that they're standing out there huffing and puffing and you like the way you've been able to control your tempo against them, just keep it methodical. Make this a nice, long, five, six-minute long drive. A in a way, give your defense a chance to rest a little bit too on the sidelines since that last drive didn't go so well for them. Second and five, they gave Busby five on that carry. So second and five here for Barlow, sends Dudik in motion out to the flat. He's going to get it out to his running back outside the flat. Dudik makes a man miss, cuts it back up inside, but gets brought down. That's actually really good gang tackling there by the, mil or by the majors, and he only gains, we'll call it three there on the reception. That's really good because Dudik is so elusive. He cuts back inside, makes one man miss, but then there was just too many white shirts there and another third and short for the Lions. They converted the last one. Don't know that we might not see the exact same play again. I, you, when you have that triple option, again, that's the name of the game. You have options. You don't have to run the exact same look, but just line up with that game plan in mind. Third and two, he sends Dudik in motion. He hands it off to Busby. Busby cuts it up inside, and it looks like he's got enough for the first down, and they will indeed move the chain. So Sagu keeps the drive going, has faced two third downs, and on both opportunities converted. That's just right up the gut. Offensive line doing their job. I don't even know that the man in motion and the fake pass after the handoff did anything. I don't think the defense bought it at all. They were zoned in on it, but that's just an offensive line winning an upfront battle against a defensive line, giving them exactly what you need. Gaining two yards is, you know, what you're supposed to do on every play, <laughs> and that's exactly what they were able to execute down to the 36-yard line. Drive is still clicking along. Three stack at the bottom of your screen. It will be an empty backfield here for Barlow. He's back to pass. Quick header to the outside to Johnson. Johnson gets wrapped up around the ankles. He's actually going to lose a yard there. That was Zachariah Johnson. It's thrown down for maybe half a yard loss, maybe a full yard, but it will be second and 11. Looks like maybe they give him no gain, so second and 10. 
And the majors, again, have just been so quick to the ball. Even though the Lions have put up 28 points and have excelled at times, it has not really been because the majors have been making mistakes or leaving guys wide open. They are quick there. Again, you saw Barlow facing pressure on that throw as well. It came out a little bit early because of that. They are getting there. It's really just credit to the Lions offense that they keep on finding ways to win against a majors team that's just very quick. Barlow hands it off to Busby. Busby breaks a tackle up the field. A flag comes in. It looks like it could be in the area of holding. We'll see what the call is here, but a good effort there by Busby. As it stands right now, picks up the first down, but we'll see what this call is. Yeah, Sagu is walking back, and that is in the area of holding, which will hurt a lot. That'll push him well out of field goal range and bring up a second and long. And there you see it holding on the offense. We didn't get a number on it, but that would explain why the hole was open for Busby to go through. That'll make it second and long here for Sagu. It looks like how they marked it, it looks like it may have happened downfield a bit, maybe about three yards downfield, because it'll actually be second and 17 instead yeah, of second and 20. I think that's exactly where it, what it was. It was about three or four yards down the field, so it was the second uh, second level where it happened. It wasn't uh, directly on the line, so only a seven-yard penalty, not as bad, all things considered, but it does erase what was an excellent run to pick up a fresh set of downs almost down into the red zone. sagu has got a little bit of work to do to get back now. Barlow, back to pass, quick hitter across the middle. Trying to make some room there and get something to work as they get back to the original line of scrimmage. That is Zachariah Johnson on the reception. It's down to 36. Yeah, get back to a third and 10. I feel like we've had a lot of third and 10s for the Lions today, and they've been able to convert a couple of them, made a couple of really big third and 10 conversions. At this point, though, you're definitely out of field goal range at the 36-yard line. Don't even know if you'd try it. If you picked up six or seven yards, I'm not sure if you'd try it. The wind seems to be a little bit in your face right now. Don't know if you're trotting out a 47-yard field goal up by 14. Barlow sends a man in motion. That is Mouton. Third and 10. Here is Barlow. He takes a snap, fakes a handoff. He's back to pass. Rolls out to his left. Now running for his life. He's got people all over him. Slings it. It's brought in and caught by Johnson but for very little yardage. An exciting play results in two yards. So it will be fourth and eight, and we'll see what Coach Smith decides to do here. It looks like they will be attempting a long field goal yep. here. Kieran Woodley has come onto the field. This would be a 51 yarder. Yep, the snap will be down at the 41. So you are right, a 51 yard field goal here for Kieran Woodley fans. If you're a fan of kicking, this is for you. This is an exciting play. Kieran Woodley has got a strong leg, wind at his back. Good snap, good hold. The kick is up, doesn't have enough leg. It does, and it is good. 51 yard field goal by Kieran Woodley. Tim, we talked about him earlier and his persistence and his accuracy on extra points. He can hit him from 17 just like he can hit him from 51. Look at that, Kieran Woodley, a huge field goal. And that would have been good for 54-55, honestly. It cleared the crossbar with something to spare with a, a little bit of a brisk wind, not much. I mean, Aaron walks a hatch here on Highway 287. There's always going to be some wind here. <laughs> but yeah, Woodley coming through huge with the field goal there. That is such a big three points to push the lead back to a three possession game at 31 to 14. Mark that down, Kieran Woodley. That is one for the highlight reel. What a kick. What a kick by Kieran Woodley. So in the end, the Lions offense does do just enough after getting that penalty. I was saying, I don't know if you tried if you get down to the 30. Well, I was wrong because <laughs> Kieran Woodley was good from the 35. <laughs> So like you said, Sagu going back up three scores, 31 to 14, 17 point lead here for the Lions. As Woodley now out to kick off two Millsaps. So Sagu answers back the Majors touchdown with a field goal of their own, a 51 yarder from Woodley. So they're matching the scoring at least drive for drive here. It's gonna be returnable. Trying to cut it to the outside and just kind of falling as there was four Sagu Lions in the area, and that is where the Majors will take over on offense down 17. Score update here. Arizona Christian up 14-7 on Louisiana College. That game 
out in Arizona. Number 22, Firestorm looking to bounce back from their loss last week against Texas Wesleyan. Langston and Whalen Baptist should be kicking off here any minute, and we'll give you updates as that game rolls along here in that 2 o'clock slot, and then the big one, 9 p.m., Texas Wesleyan off a big win against Arizona Christian going on the road to Arizona in a 9 p.m. Central time, 7 p.m. local time start as the majors try to take a shot across the middle, but it is broken up, tipped before it gets to the defender. It'll be second and 10. That was a dangerous pass because that's going to be tipped over the middle. That's one of those can, that can bounce up and get intercepted easily. So far today, though, uh, for Millsaps, one thing they have not done is had a turnover. Second and 10. Here's Thompson back to pass. Looking deep down towards the sideline. It's brought in. What a catch. Dragging the feet for Austin Russell. That ball was placed perfectly on that corner route, and it moves the chains. Yeah, Thompson arcs it in there, and his receivers have just done a very good job of extending to make those plays and getting their feet down. Push it up to the 46-yard line. The offense of the majors is still clicking at this point. They had a really good first drive, and obviously down again by three scores. They need to have another one. Back to pass is Thompson. A big hit across the middle. The receiver had the ball, but knocked loose by Demarin Heron. Wow, what a hit across the middle. And Tim, if you're a defensive back, that is a hit that you dream of. You go to bed Friday night dreaming of a hit like this on Saturday morning, and he delivered. Yeah, that, that's one of those. The receivers just kind of hung out to dry over the middle, trying to make the catch, delivering the nice shoulder hit breaking that ball up and Heron has had a great day in that secondary. He has excelled this afternoon. Second and 10, Thompson steps up in the pocket, across the middle, completes the pass, but then brought down on another big hit. This Sagu defensive backfield is hitting this afternoon. Third and four here now for the majors. And that was something we saw in the first game against Louisiana, that they can you know, lay the wood, so to speak, get out there and put some hard hits on players. It was just the fact that they couldn't hit Ottawa, Arizona last week because it's hard to catch Ottawa, Arizona to put the hit on them. <laughs> so this defense can fly around and lay some big hits. Oh, and Sagu's going to jump offsides. They're going to blow it dead, as they may call that unabated to the quarterback, and it should result in a first down here for the majors. That's what started the majors rally in the first place was a free five yards at midfield for a free set of downs, and they're going to get one right here on third and five. Sagu looked to be bringing pressure off the edge and just a little too anxious. Defense offside, unabated to the quarterback, number three. That play results in a first down. So right after the big hit from Taz Allen, he's going to take the big five-yard penalty, move the ball down to the 44-yard line. Fresh set of downs for the majors who are looking to get this back to a two-score game. Back to pass is Thompson. Clean pocket, he steps up. He's gonna get swallowed up by Rodriguez. He gets away from Drake Rodriguez and slides. And that is very fortunate if you're a Majors fan. Thompson, we say it often, if, you, if, if Drake Rodriguez gets a hold of you, you're going down. That time, Thompson, I think he used his size to his advantage. They just kind of slipped out of the arms. It almost felt like that. You know, if, if you're not a very tall guy, use that, use your leverage. Get down beneath the defender because that seemed like a sack for sure. But instead, he goes and scampers for a five-yard gain. They hand it off here on second down. Short gain there, gain of one. So that'll make it third and four here for Millsaps. Another third down here. They found a way to keep converting them so far as yeah, just fighting forward for everything you can get. And I, I think we've already said it before, it's definitely four down territory at this point, down 17 inside the 40 yard line. They're taking the time and I'm not sure if you're not calling in two plays right there. You got to think this is, you like to call it the maroon zone, Tim. Yeah. You got to think this is four down territory. They do hand it off, cutting it upfield and they will be short of the line to gain. So we'll be fourth down here. Down 17. 
You got to think they go for it. I see no movement on that sideline of Millsap, so they will indeed. Oh. oh, no, there is movement. They are going to bring the punting unit out here with 1.45 left to play in the third quarter. Tim, time is not their friend right now. No, you're under 17 minutes to play in the game. You're down 17 points. You've got good field position. Now, you do have a punter that can uh, caddy corner this in for, you know, inside the five-yard line. If I'm Sagu, I'm not rushing. I'm watching very safety here. you got three guys back. This is definitely a fake situation. So if I'm Sagu, heads on a swivel right now. Here is Clapatch. He's going to indeed punt it away. End over end punt. And it will land, and then a good job by that last line of defense to bat it away from the end zone. And Sagu will have to go on offense from the two-yard line. So it does work out there. I mean, you pin the Lions deep. If you can stop them quick, get the ball back, uh, you'll have pretty much the entirety of the fourth quarter. But if Sagu's able to pick up a first, couple of first downs, that'll be a decision you probably regret if you are a major the the positive thing here is though that aaron clap uh i'm sorry ethan clapetch uh gets his punt back the punt that was erased from that five yard penalty they give him first down <laughs> he now has it back so yes he pins, does he has officially pinned the lions at the two yard line today excellent punter honestly he's put on he a couple of a couple of very different looking punts but you know obviously you'd if you're, if you're commenting your punter, it means things haven't gone perfectly, but it's always a good thing to have. We have a new quarterback into the game for Sagu. Indeed it is. It is Christian Allen enters the game for the Lions. Let's see if that was just for a temporary look. Obviously scanning the sideline, see if you see Jordan Barlow getting any work at a table. I don't. I haven't spied him yet. He seemed fine after the last drive. Barlow's actually holding up the play-calling cardboard, whatever you want to call it. He's yeah, there down he there is. with the, uh, the, the, play, the play art. Allen will keep it himself. He does end up pitching it, and that looks like it's going over. Busby with a good move, takes it to the sideline, hurdles a man, and cleanly lands on the other side of him. Wow, Kevin Busby going airborne and moving the chains. That play seemed busted from the start. Busby seemed like he was <laughs> dead to rights. Not only does he break the tackles, but gets outside, uh, and this is just a clean hurdle. We'll see it coming right here, right at your screen. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> and yeah, you, wow. you, you hear the crowd respond to that replay. They just saw it on the Jumbotron. <laughs> they couldn't believe it themselves. That is, uh, wow, that was special. That was special by Kevin Busby. Sagu's got a new set of downs here. Allen in a quarterback still. He will hand it off, cutting it up the middle. There's, I believe, a new running back into the game. Indeed it is. Wearing number six is Dakivion Rose. So Sagu comes out with a totally different look on this drive, but it works. They, they take the ball from the two yard line out to the 25 on just a few plays, escape that terrible field position. And as the third quarter ends, they're ahead 31 to 14 and driving. Three score lead for Sagu. And it looks like for the time being, Coach Smith has deemed that enough got to be thrilled with the way his defense has played. They did give up two touchdown drives on two long plays, uh, kind of busted coverages where the receivers were wide open. But other than that, Sagu's defense has been stout and very good all afternoon long. And you got to think he's uh, trying to keep his starting core of offensive players healthy for the time being, seeing what they can do here against competition with a full quarter of play left here uh, against Millsaps. Yeah, I, that's literally all I can imagine. Now, you wouldn't necessarily consider a 17-point lead when you rest all the starters and bring in the backups. If anything, it was a, just a nice, different look to throw out there. There is the live look into the volleyball game against Mac U for the Lady Lions. Mac U did take set one. They are in set three. Mac U always so good. They have the number one hitter in the conference on their team with over three, a 300 hitting percentage, which if you think that in baseball terms, you can have a negative hitting percentage in volleyball. <laughs> so that is an absolutely insane stat line for Mac U. So we'll keep an eye on that one. Again, historic day for Sagu Sports Network. Double broadcast. You got football and you got volleyball. 
as we start the fourth quarter here. Here's Allen, the quarterback keeper around the around the end, trying to make some uh, make some room, but he gets knocked down from behind and actually loses his helmet. So it's going to bring a third and one on the design quarterback run. So he's going to have to come off the field actually because he did lose the helmet. The Barlow may have to go out there. He will. Barlow will get the helmet on, and he may take one snap here, try to get the first down, and then Allen probably, I would assume, comes back into the game. So it's good to see that Barlow is completely healthy. Uh, this wasn't a, a pull for health. Uh, interesting. I'm have to ask Coach Smith about it during the week. Say, hey, was was this a was this already resting some starter situation, a long, hot game like this, or, or were you just looking for a totally different look at this point? The play clock is at zero. It took them a while to throw the flag there. So that will be a delay of game. And that one kind of felt like it was going to happen from the get-go. Delay of game. Number eight of the offense. Five-yard penalty. Third down. Tried to get him with the hard count, but Millsaps did not bite. So that will make it third and six here for Sagu. But the good news is Barlow can come off the field. Although it looks like he's going to stay on the field to try to convert a longer or a mid third down conversion here and i'm not even sure with the rule of having to leave the game for one play if you lose your helmet i'm not sure if that uh is fulfilled through a penalty honestly i'm not sure if a delay a game even counts officially as a play but barlow will stay in here on third and six majors needing to stop to get this ball back he turns around and hands it off and that is going nowhere Millsaps gets a stop and Sagu will have to give it back to the majors that's gonna be Christian Hawkins who just comes barreling into the backfield throw lines for a big loss Kalan Page on the carry gets brought down for a loss so it'll make it fourth and 13 so it was a huge loss a loss of seven and Sagu they took the ball from the two yard line up to the 25 but then lose eight yards from there is they did their job though they got you know away from the shadow of the end zone they burnt some time and now they'll punt it back to the majors who are the ones who punted it away to begin with fourth and two inside the lions 40. seth green gets the punt off and a beautiful spiral fielded at the 50 after the fair catch so right at midfield is where Millsaps will take over down three scores 31 to 14. And they're going to have to make some quick work now. you got a short field, so this is where you can go get your touchdown in less than three minutes to cut this lead down to 10. And then work the rest of the quarter from there. Score update from Langston to Wayland Bamsis. Langston does jump out to the early 6-0 lead. Meanwhile, Arizona Christian having a little bit of trouble with Louisiana that's College. A, that's a tight game. That's, a tight, that's why I told you, don't read into too much about Louisiana College's first couple of games. They played some very tough competition as Millsaps comes out here on first down and Thompson slings it to the sideline and it is brought in for a first down by Moise Tezo and they will move the chains quickly. So the majors here are able to, they're, they're, they've been able to move the ball on offense so far in the second half. And they, they're not done yet. It's a three-score game, and they are they are fighting every second of the way. Here's Thompson. He's going to hand it off to his big running back, and he is barreling through the Sagu defenders down after a gain of nine. That is Jaden Horton, the six-foot, 240-pound running back. And you see why. It is hard to stop that, especially once he gets past that initial line. He outweighs and outmatches every other defender. So it's going to take a couple of guys to disrupt him and bring him down. Ball down to the 27. The majors are moving quickly. Second and one. Here's Thompson. Takes a snap. He's going to hand it off to his big back again, and he is able to fall forward. That is very close to the first down marker. I have not seen a signal, and there it is. It will be a first down. So new set of downs here for the majors. Horton outweighs starting running back Nick Shanklin by 35 pounds, Tim. Very different <laughs> style of running that yep. we're seeing from Horton. That's what you want to see when you have two backs. You want to two totally different looks so the defense doesn't know what's coming at them. 
First and 10 here for Millsaps. Back to pass is Thompson. He's looking deep. He's going to step out, roll to his right, trying to make a man miss. He does make a man miss. What a run there on the outside. Was able to break down the defender and had really had no shot in open space against Thompson was Joseph Chavez. That's going to be second and seven now. These have all been scrambles from Thompson today, but he's done pretty good. Only picks up three there, but considering the alternative, that's a pretty big three yards. Checking into the game at running back will be Montreal Felix back in the game. Here's Thompson. Back to pass. Clean pocket. He's going to let it go to the corner of the end zone. Has a man, and it is caught for a touchdown. An insane catch by Austin Russell in the corner of the end zone. And a beautiful throw by Caleb Thompson. And he just went right up over the defensive back and brought it in. Trevion McNeil is blanketing him. Just a perfectly dropped in ball hanging on the entire way. And yeah, we mentioned him so much pregame, but Austin Russell comes through finally with his first touchdown of the season right here. And the lead is going to be back down to two possessions. Single coverage on Austin Russell. We, you, you mentioned we talked about it. It's, it's like playing with fire. Do you let him be in single coverage all day? And it, even, even if he is, he can beat you. They gave no help over the top there, and he just threw a 50-50 ball for his big receiver, and he brought it in. And just like that, it's a 10-point game. This game is not over. I expect oh. to see Barlow come back out and try to try to get some offense going here in late in the or almost five minutes gone in the first fourth yeah, quarter. Yeah, 10-point game and pretty much the entire fourth quarter yet to play. Uh, you've got so much time on the clock. This thing is anything but over. Which is, which is why I still feel like that last drive was more the Lions just putting out a totally different look. Just saying, all right, hey, we're just going to give you something that you have no tape on today. And it, it initially worked. They got from the 2 to the 25, but it, it petered out towards the end there. They weren't able to get the, the last play they needed in to keep that drive moving, uh, thanks to, you know, some penalties and such. Remember how big that 51-yard field goal was? Is that, without Huge. that, it's a, it's a one-score, seven-point game. Well, Kieran Woodley... Absolutely huge from Woodley. Makes that field goal even bigger. The kickoff is up, and it is over the return man's head into the end zone for a touchback. So Sagu will take over possession here from the 25. And we will see what look they decide to go with here. Up two scores, up 10. 31-21 with 11-24 left to play uh, in this one in the fourth quarter. It looks like Barlow doesn't have his helmet on, so Christian Allen looks like he will be coming back out into the ball game. And now you do start to wonder if something maybe isn't 100% right with Barlow because there's no way at this point you'd be kicking the tires on backups and resting starters when you're only up 10 with 11 and a half to play. So it will be Christian Allen. Sagu's forced to take a timeout out of the kickoff there. Sag so maybe some confusion there going on coming out of the kickoff, out of the touchback with maybe what play to run, what formation, what package they were going to run with. And Coach Smith is forced to burn a timeout. One you hope you don't need when you're up 10 points. You're hoping that you're not the one needing your timeouts in the fourth quarter. Into the half, Arizona Christian with that 14 to 10 lead against Louisiana College. And then Langston still in the first quarter goes up nine to nothing against Wayland Baptist. And of course, Sagu leading 31-21 right here in Waxahachie on the Sagu Sports Network. And then lastly tonight, 9 p.m. Central Time start for Texas Wesleyan and the Ottawa of Arizona Spirit. So here we are out of the timeout. Christian Allen in at quarterback for the Lions. He pumps. He swings it out to the, the flat. There's Mike Mouton. Mouton is brought down for no gain. Actually a loss of one. So it'll make it second and 11. Yeah, absolutely nowhere to go there. The pressure from the outside forces the ball out a little bit behind Mouton. 
and then just not an inch to move. The majors were everywhere, swarming. They've, they've done a great job of getting to the ball, not allowing anybody to really break free for major gains after catches. Second and 11, Christian Allen with two running backs with him in the backfield. Takes a snap, hands it off, and that is brought down quickly as that's going to go for no gain. Back to the line of scrimmage for third and 11 here in Sagu's offense. Seems to be content with trying to take as many seconds off the clock as possible. What's noteworthy is I don't see Keaton Dudick out there either. Yeah, Kalan Page with that carry. I've not seen Dudick or Busby on the field. So both of the top two running backs have been off the field as well as Jordan Barlow. Third and long. Here's Allen. Back to pass. Shoulder shimmy going to the sideline looking for Jamal Long, and that is incomplete. And that is a three and out, and Sagu will be forced to punt the ball back to Millsaps. A good defensive stand there from, from Millsaps. And they are right back in this thing, Tim. 10-point game. They're getting the ball back with 9.58, just under 10 minutes left to go. Oh, yeah, an absolute eternity is left now. Millsaps, who found themselves down 17 points. They took a short field for that quick score, and now that three and out only burned about a minute and a half. Low snap, but the kick is a high spiral. Fair catch called for and brought in at the 45-yard line. So that's where Millsaps will take over. And the thing about these last two drives for Millsaps is they've had really good field position. Yeah, they've sure. been able to keep Sagu back in their own territory and take over almost at midfield. Yeah, in back to back drives. Sagu has been punting from deep in their own end. Yeah, 50 in the 45. So they haven't had to go very far. And any points on this drive will make it a one possession game. And like I said, with 9.50 left, uh, a 10 point lead is not only not insurmountable, it is incredibly shaky, especially the way that Millsaps has looked on offense in this drive. They only really voluntarily left the field when they punted on that fourth and two. First carry, or first play rather, is a carry for the big running back. He's going to go nowhere. A gain of one there for Jaden Horton. Make it second and nine. Millsaps going no huddle. We've seen them do that several times in this game. Just set right back up. Here is Thompson back to pass. Looking to the flat. He's got his man. That's Russell. Russell spinning, fighting for the first down. He's going to be just shy. It's going to make it third and two. Millsaps right back up. And yeah, the connection. Thompson is really starting to throw a lot better as this game gone, has gone on. The first quarter, he was all over the place. He has zoned in and is connecting with his receivers extremely well. Caleb Thompson, third and two. Will hand it off to his big back, and he's going to bounce off the tackle, fighting for the first down. He's going to pick up a gain of one, which makes it fourth and one. And there's a little bit of a tangle there at the end. We'll see if there's any extracurriculars there is not and sagu is able to hold them and they are quickly making some shifts they i th believe they're staying on the field the major jumbo are package for here it. for the majors fourth and one We've Sagu trying to get some changes in a timeout by sagu but a flag did come out i wonder if they got the timeout off before the 12 men because there was too many men on the field well, the catch here is the majors are the one who substituted to begin with. You have to let and Sagu, if you, if yeah. you sub. Before the play, timeout on Sagu. That is their second charge timeout. So Sagu has to burn a timeout, but they really shouldn't have there. The refs need to control that situation. When the offense does a substitution like that and bring in an entirely different package, they have to wait for the defense yep. to substitute as well. So that's actually a missed situation by the refs to where Sagu is forced to burn a timeout. It will bring up a fourth and one at the 46-yard line. We'll see if they come back out in that jumbo package again. We've seen them run a quarterback sneak unsuccessfully on fourth down once already in this ball game. Yeah, that turnover on downs is what stopped the initial 
Majors rally when they were down 21-7. Looked about to cut it to 21-14. They stopped them on fourth and one. Another stop on fourth and one here would stem another huge rally that has them on the verge again of bring it down to a one score game. Saggy was not let them cut it back to that one score. And they're going to need a big stand here to keep it that way. We each a little bit reach a little bit of a lull here as the officials discuss something coming out of the timeout. I wonder if they're going to go quarterback sneak again. The uh, quarterback for Millsaps, Caleb Thompson, stands 5'9", 160. Their backup quarterback, Melvendrick Johnson, lists 6'3", 210. Got to wonder if maybe they'd rather have him in there. Uh-oh. That spells trouble for Sagu. They try to jump the snap, and they reach across and make contact. And again, multiple times this game, Sagu has gifted Millsaps a first down by way of penalty. Defense. 55, offside. That play will result in first down. Noah that, Gibson. That is the, and they say 55, but it's clearly number 10 here who's going to come over the top and disrupt everything. That's going to be Zach Nelson. Zach Nelson. That is the fourth time that on third or fourth down, the Lions have jumped offsides and given a first down to the majors. Thompson's. That, Swings just, it out to the, the to this flat, his man uh, Tezo. That's just devastating. You cannot do that. You cannot on four separate occasions hand a team a first down on third and third or fourth down purely by jumping off sides. Here's Thompson, back to pass, steps up in the pocket, lets it go, has his man open. It's Russell. Austin Russell keeps his feet, but he steps out of bounds regardless. Right there in the red zone, right at the 20 yard line are the majors and they are marching down the field here. Yeah, after getting that, con that fourth down conversion, they have clicked again inside the 20. The handoff, there's Shanklin. He gets brought down quickly for a loss of one. Nick Shanklin checks back into the game at running back. Great. Makes it second and 11. Another great play there. We've seen a couple of them today from Taz Allen getting over there and disrupting that run. Back to pass is Thompson. Thompson looking to the corner of the end zone. Air mails his receiver that will fall harmlessly incomplete, making it third and 11. The intended receiver that time, Nick Hayes. And that's going to be clearly overthrown. Decent coverage, but it wouldn't have mattered. That ball was clearly overthrown. Something we saw Thompson do a lot early on. He's really zoned in lately. Third and 11, big down here for the Sagu defense. Four wide, two on either side. Felix in the backfield, it's gonna be designed. Quarterback keeper and it goes nowhere. Drake Rodriguez making the initial contact and sniffed that one out. Brings him down for a loss and that's a huge tackle for loss. Just bullies his way through the offensive line and demolishes the quarterback. And it will bring on the field goal unit it's been a little shaky on the extra point, so this is not a gimme field goal. It will be a 41-yard field goal for place kicker Cameron Beal. And that sack again from Rodriguez, just amazing. The snap, the hold, the kick is up. Does it have enough leg? It will not and was wide left. So Sagu's defense holds the majors to no points. And how big was that tackle for loss by Drake Rodriguez? Because it may have taken them just out of the range of their place kicker, uh, Cameron Beal. That game altering sack there from Drake Rodriguez. Not only does it prevent any sort of play to pick up the third down conversion. It stops a drive that was really clicking and keep, again, throws him back far enough to make that field goal that much tougher and forces to keep the, a 10 point game. Now it looks like we will have Barlow back out onto the field. You gotta want him to, to lead the offense to a few first downs here to milk some time off that clock. Here is Barlow, double stacks either side of him. He's going to hand it off to Dudik, who is also back on the field. And his first carry goes for eight, maybe nine yards there on first down. A little extra shoving on the outside after the play. No harm done, no flags. So after two punts with a different unit out on the field, Barlow and Dudik immediately come right back out and do what they've done so many times today. Attack that edge on a first down run. Picks up seven yards. Clock is now ticking and back in the Lions' favor. They call it a gain of seven, second and three. 
here for Sagu's offense. They come back out in the same formation. Two stacks either side of Barlow. Dudek in the backfield. Sends a man in motion. Fakes a handoff. Here's the option. He's going to keep it himself. He's going to end up pitching it to Johnson. There is a flag on the back side of that play. But Zachariah Johnson receives the pitch from Barlow. We'll see what this call is. And this is a big call from this official. Looking back at... Potentially a block in the back. We'll wait on the call. Sagu is walking backwards, so it looks like it's going to go against the Lions. Holding. Offense 52. 10 yards. Second down. Antoine McDowell gets nabbed for the holding call. So that makes it second and 13. Yeah, the race is what it was a, the first time that they've actually pitched out on that triple option. Yep. What was a very good run to pick up the first down and keep the clock moving. Instead, the clock will stop and they'll face a second and long. Here is Barlow. Dudek in the backfield. Takes a snap. He's going to keep it himself and then pump fake out to the flat and keeps it runs over a defender and falls forward for the first down jordan barlow that play is all barlow that that is an impressive play with the play action looking out and just completely fakes the defender out this time on the pump fake and then lowers his <laughs> shoulder to go over the top for the first down you never want to see your quarterback run like that but it worked because sagu picks up the first down and they move those chains he, he plays with some competitive fire. Coming up on five minutes left to play here in the fourth quarter. Sagu up 10, 31 to 21. Here's Barlow. He's going to hand it off to Dudek. Dudek has a huge hole. Can he make a man miss? He does. Gets around the edge. Down past the 30. Down past the 20. Cuts it back inside. Down past the 10. The 5. Can he spin in the end zone? He can. Into the end zone. J Keaton Dudek makes this a three-score game one more time. What a run by Keaton Dudek. Takes it 63 yards for the touchdown. You, you could almost write a novel about that run. It had everything. It had speed, a hesitation to throw the defender off, juking back inside. Just watch this. It's a work of art. First of all, gaping hole by the offensive line. Then right here, steady stutter steps, throws the defender off, beats him to the corner. He's going to cut back inside here. And then here's where the pressure comes. You think, okay, well, he's gone this far. No way. Breaks his first tackle at the 12, sheds it off throws a guy off at the five, and then carries three guys into wow. the end zone. An incredible run. The extra point was up, and it was good by Kieran Woodley. So that makes it a 38-21 game lead back out to 17 on the 63-yard touchdown run by Keaton Dudek. Incredible, incredible run. And it all really got broken open on that hesitation, crossing the 50-yard line, just slowing up a little bit to make the defender think, okay, he's about to cut back inside. That slows the defender down, and you know when you can kick the Jets back on. That's exactly what Duda did. did. He fired it right back up, beat him to the corner. Just an amazing run. And I might add, Dudek's third touchdown run today, and potentially the dagger in a game that has just held in the balance for forever. The majors have just been threatening pretty much since midway through the second quarter to cut this back to a one possession game, make it anybody's ball game. That right there with less than five minutes to play might just be the dagger that's gonna put Sagu over the top this afternoon. There is the look in. Sagu winning the third set. Mackey leads 2-1, set number four tied at two, so Sagu the Lady Lions doing what they can to survive against a very good Mac U Lady Evangels team. The kickoff from Woodley is up and it is fielded at the 10 yard line. Looking for some room to the outside, gets past the 30 and he's down just shy of the 40 yard line. Return man Moise Tezo, called his name a lot today, with a pretty good return there for Millsaps. And we talked a lot about, I mentioned in pregame, about 
establishing identities in games like this. You're not as worried about matching the other team up. You're not as worried as you are in conference about, okay, who is this guy? Oh, we've seen this guy get four times before. we got to figure everything out. Sagu has established today that they can run, that Keaton Dudek might just be as much of an offensive leader on this team as Jordan Barlow is. Oh, my goodness. Is that a catch? Incomplete oh. out of bounds. That would have been incredible by Austin Russell. He's protesting. He thinks he brought that in. Caleb Thompson put that on a dime. Let's take a look here. He goes. He does come down with it. See where that first foot lands. That is tough to see. That's that's tough. Yeah, you, you need 4K for that. But I'm that right foot might have been down in bounds. That was tough to see. Yeah, that's tough I to call. Do not envy that line, Judge. That and, and, is tough. and you got to keep in mind the ball is the ball shifting still when that first foot lands. Very close to an amazing Looking catch. Into the sidelines falls incomplete. That pass intended for Connor Rucker. We'll make it third and 10 here for the majors. And a timeout here as a Sagu Lion defender is injured, slow to get up here. Looks like it's Damaris Heron. May just be cramping a little bit. It is a hot day out today and he has been, for lack of a better, he's been flying all over the field. Yeah, he's, Damaris Heron. he's been everywhere. And yeah, he'll just get up on his own power and take the few steps he needs to get out of bounds. Checking into the game is Kashawn Kelly for the injured Heron. So third and 10 here for Caleb Thompson in this majors offense from the 40-yard line. Thompson back to pass. Steps up the pocket. He's going to get brought down by Noah Gibson. And a huge sack there for the Sagu defense. Makes it fourth and long. And out comes the punting unit for Millsaps. Yeah, Sagu defense has been able to start bringing that pressure. Haven't really seen many sacks the last two weeks. But they get the huge one in the last drive to lead to the missed field goal. And then they've polished off this drive here. And as we go under four minutes to play. Sagu will be getting the ball back in complete control of this one. Just looking to run the clock out and move. Oh, another that block punt. It is. It is tipped. And fortunately again for Millsaps. Oh, he picked it up. Sagu, uh, a Sagu defender picked it up. And that could have been very dangerous because if he, he would have fumbled it, it would have been Millsap ball. He could have run with it. He absolutely could have run with it. He, he picked it up and didn't move. I don't, I don't know if he thought he was picking up a fumble or downing it if he picked up he had a lane to run i thought he was for sure he's gonna be gone there for uh, a second yeah unsure of that but regardless another block punt it does yeah. end up with positive yardage for Millsaps somehow uh but that, sagu will take over possession here past midfield yeah two block punts today and uh, i think it just kind of shows how sagu has excelled Let's talk about all three phases of the ball game offense of course has looked good throughout the game continuously put together consistent drives. You have 38 points on the board, which you all, anytime you get into the high 30s, you know you've had a good day on offense. The defense has made the big stands when they need them. And on defense, you got two block punts and a 51 yard, I mean, special teams, two block punts and a 51 yard field goal. New quarterback into the game for Sagu is Dylan Fretoloso. And a big gain there on first down. A flag does come in late down the field. Yeah, that's probably going to erase a great run by Kevin Busby. Wait for the official call here. And so it will be, it'll be 10 yards. It'll be probably a hold 10 yards from the 35 yard line. So it won't erase everything. Block in the back. Offense number 13. That's a 10 yard penalty. Repeat first down. Khalil Jenkins gets nabbed for the block in the back. It'll make it first and eight. eight. The, the very rare first and eight. First and eight. Things have to go very specific to have a first and eight. <laughs> so here is Fred Oloso again in at quarterback. The sophomore stands 6'2", 198. Takes a snap, and he's going to hand it off. Here's Busby. Busby trying to get it around the outside. Throws a stiff arm. Gets it down past the 40s. Brought down out of bounds. 
Pretty good run there on first and eight. That's going to make it second and a long two. Most importantly, after the ball gets reset, the clock will keep ticking. And Sagu will just count the seconds to their second win of the season, their first win here at home. And getting a chance to, to see some different looks. Obviously, we saw... Uh, it'll be interesting to find out what the what the idea was there with the backups in there for a little while. Was that just purely to give your offense a breather? Were you confident enough that if you needed to bring them back out, you could? Uh, so we'll definitely figure that out in the week. Just you know, more just curiosity than yeah, anything. I'm, I'm still it, not sure. It's but, all uh, academic at this point, and you know the defense did the job they needed to. But it is always nice to you know kind of see some of that depth. You, unfortunately, in football, you never know when you're going to need to test that depth. You hope you don't have to. But it's good to know that especially underneath Keaton Dudek, you got Kevin Busby and a few other running backs who can put things together. They will move the chains, so it'll be a first down. And as I mentioned, though, the big thing that we found out today, we kind of saw it last week, Keaton Dudek is the left punch for this offense oh, officially absolutely. now. Absolutely. We, we've known what Jordan Barlow can do, and he had another great day. But <clears throat> Keaton Dudek, we've always known he's there. But after he took over the game to help the Lions rally, even though they lost last week, but the way he has controlled this ball game, well over 100 yards rushing, obviously, oh, and yeah. three touchdowns. Absolutely. Uh, that, that's what you want to see. And as we mentioned, he's not just a runner. He can come out of the backfield catching as well. He had a number of catches today. So this was this was the Keaton Dudek game. Obviously, a lot of other guys, Jamal Long had a great touchdown catch. Uh, Jordan Barlow was Jordan Barlow. <laughs> that's the problem when you're Jordan Barlow. Eventually, you've set the bar so high that you just have a regular old 290-yard passing day with a couple of touchdowns. You go, hey, good job. <laughs> you you got to do more to impress us now. But Keaton Dudek had a great, great game today. Back to passes. Fredeloso completing a pass out into the flat. First time we've seen him throw. He's fired up. He completed a pass. He's <laughs> he's he is hyped up. He first collegiate completion for Dylan Fredeloso. And you saw the fist pump. It brings up third and three. Under a minute to play now. Clock will continue running and Sagu will just let it run on down. If they pick up a first down, that'll be it. If they don't, then they'll have an academic 20 seconds to, to figure out exactly <laughs> what you're supposed to do with. Third and three, Sagu up 38-21. This should be the last play. Fredeloso will keep it himself, lowers the shoulder, comes up short of the first down marker. I think they're just going to give it to him. <laughs> and they do give it to him, so that uh, will know, move the chains. I think he might have actually been a few inches short, but the refs are like, okay, we can either reset the clock and have to punt this ball away and figure, let's just give him the first down and then, then, and then let's all go home. It's hot. <laughs> it is a hot one. That will do it for this one. Sagu runs the clock out. The teams will line up at midfield for their post-game handshake. Sagu gets back on the winning track. 38-21, the victory over the Millsaps Majors hailing from Jackson, Mississippi. Sagu will improve to two and one on the season, still remain one and one in conference. The Millsaps Majors will fall to 0 and two after this loss here today in a hard fought competition. Tim, it says 38 to 21 in a three score game, but after that initial 21 nothing lead, it did not feel like that big of a lead for Sagu. No, the entire game from that point on felt like you were just one play away from disaster if you were the Lions. The entire game. And the Majors cut it back to 14, then they cut it all the way back to 10. Twice they had the ball. They had the ball down 14, facing fourth and one at the 13-yard line. Then they had it down 10, down inside the Sagu red zone. Were unable to convert either time to get it to that crucial one-score game. The Lions are able to weather it, just, and they just kept on finding the answers when they needed to. You know, you go back over the game here, the Lions opened up with three touchdowns to go up 21-0. But that crucial fourth down, when the Majors were punting away, and it's like, okay, this ball game might be over in the second quarter. A five-yard penalty, which you see the penalty stats up there for the Lions, still a little bit too high. 11 uh, last week, 10 this week, so yeah. it's an improvement. Yeah. By one, by one. <laughs>
Uh, luckily, they weren't for big yardage. They were all those five-yard penalties pretty much. But situationally, they were huge. Yeah, but that gave them the 21-7 deficit. Then the big stand, possibly the play of the game, was Sagu stopping them on fourth and one, that quarterback yep. sneak at around the 13-14 yard line. With that, the Lions were able to go up 28-7 at the half. The Majors cut it back to 28-14 to on a beautiful Thompson to Tezo touchdown pass. The Lions got a crucial 51-yard field goal from Kieran Woodley to make it 31-14. to Then another touchdown brought to 31-21. And again, it was very dicey there for a minute. The Majors had the ball back down just 10 points. They got inside the red zone. But it was not quite enough as they missed their field goal that would have made it a 10-possession game. And then you just saw it on your screen there, I believe. Keaton Dudick putting the game away with a highlight reel 63-yard touchdown run to make it 38-21. And it was just running the clock out at that point. There you look at the, the Sooner Athletic Conference score updates that we have. Arizona Christian holding on to that 14 to 10 lead. There you see a live look in actually. Arizona Christian donning the red jerseys, yellow pants, yellow helmets, and then Louisiana College in the whites and orange. Up 14 to 10, three minutes and some change, just under four minutes left in the third quarter and there you see Langston still holding that on to that nine to nothing lead against Wayland Baptist so tight tight contests today in the Sooner Athletic Conference Sagu of course looks like they walk away with a 17 point lead but again we were just saying it really didn't feel like a three score game there through through about halfway through the second quarter almost all the way to the end of the game as Millsaps just did everything they could to to kind of fight and and scratch and claw and stay alive there you look at the Sooner Athletic Conference standings as up to the minute as we can be. Langston, again, up 9-0 at 2-0. Ottawa, 2-0 as well. Ottawa, the, the perennial powerhouse here in the Sooner Athletic Conference. Texas Wesleyan, who is up and coming, newer football program. But again, if there's anything we know about our rival just up 287 is that they are... They breed champions in Texas Wesleyan, regardless if it's football, basketball, or like you said earlier, ping pong. It's, uh, they, they breed athletes at Texas Wesleyan. Wayland Baptist at 1-0. Sagu, of course, improves to 2-1 on the season, will remain, uh, or I'm sorry, they, 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 yes, they, they improve to 2-1 on the season, but remain 1-1 in conference as today was an out-of-conference game against Millsaps. Arizona Christian, 0-1 in conference, 1-1 overall. And then you got the bottom four, Texas College, 0-2, Louisiana College. Again, take that with a grain of salt. Louisiana College has had a really, really hard start to the season, and they are hanging tough with Langston, Lyon, and then, of course, Oklahoma, Oklahoma Panhandle State University down there at the bottom of the Student Athletic Conference. There you see set number four between the Sagu Lady Lions and the Mackey Lady Evans. Angels up 15 6 in set four. They're looking to live as Mac U is up two sets to one against the Lady Lions. And again, Tim, this is just such a historic day here for the Sagu Sports Network. Again, we mentioned it earlier, our first double broadcast going at the same time. And uh, Devin Webb, our volleyball broadcast, going at it solo today, doing such a good job over there in the Schaefer Center. I'm sure that can't be easy to have to call a game by yourself. <laughs> she, but she knows her stuff. Sometimes I feel like we're just interrupting her. Uh, <laughs> whenever, whenever one of us talks, we're just interrupting uh, volleyball expertise. <laughs> whenever Devin's talking, uh, I remember calling a couple of games with her, and I was just like, "I'm just going to let you say all the words." You, you know I, what? It, it's foot, the way to go. This is my dojo right here. 120 <laughs> yards long with the end zones. I understand this. I'll let you talk about volleyball. Of course, we've got a lot of other broadcasts coming up here. Not all double broadcast but we've got soccer coming up Tuesday Arlington Baptist coming to town the women kick off at 1 p.m. and the men will kick off at 3 30 I believe both teams got some big wins over the weekend so that's always fun to tune in for some soccer action over at the Sagu campus and of course coming up well not next week Sagu goes on the road next week but yep. the week after yep. homecoming Saturday the Arkansas Baptist Buffaloes come to town you always got to tune in for homecoming there's just so much going on you got pregame festivities you got the crowning of the homecoming king and queen at halftime just so much fun the game just always means a little bit more on homecoming so be sure and tune in that'll be at two o'clock on Saturday October 2nd we'll be here having a blast 
And as you said, next week, Sagu goes on the road against Arizona Christian for a big Sooner Athletic Conference matchup. And right now we have our sideline reporter, Jazz Williams, who is standing alongside our Sagu Sports Network player of the game. And if you don't know, you could have guessed it, quarterback Jordan Barlow. Jazz, down to you. Thanks, Adam. Jordan, the offense last, in last week's game in the second half it was good, carried over to this week's game. What would you attribute to the success today? Um, yeah, we had a great carryover. I feel like it uh, came from a great week of practice. We're trying to stay locked in, focus on the things we control instead of trying to do too much, trying to look ahead to next week. We're trying to focus a day at a time, be ready to roll on Saturdays. Big game next week against 22nd ranked Arizona Christian. What will you do to prepare for the Firestorm's defense? Same thing, same thing. We played them twice last year, great games both times. We expect another tough fight. Um, we're going to focus a day at a time, rest tonight, get ready to go tomorrow, and be ready for next week. Thanks, Jordan. Congrats on today's win. You. Back to you, Adam. Thank you, Jazz. Thank you, Jordan. He is he is so entertaining to listen to. He is just such a well-spoken individual, and, and I think I can speak for both of us when I say we are very thankful that he decided to <laughs> come back for this final season because he did graduate in the spring and had a decision to make. We didn't know what it was until until – it rolled around, the news yeah. rolled around that he was coming back for, for his last and final season to play quarterback here for the Sagu Lions. There you see Sagu with a comfortable 18-8 to lead in set number four against yeah. the so Lady switch Evangels. Over. Set five is coming. you got to watch set five. So <laughs> we're, we're going to get out of your way here so you can switch over to set Absolutely. five. Absolutely. You can watch today's game along with hundreds of other on-demand videos anytime on the Sagu Sports Network YouTube channel. Be sure to like this video and hit subscribe so you don't miss out on any action, not just football. We're talking volleyball. We're talking soccer. Once the spring rolls around, we're talking basketball. Maybe we we get a little baseball action. Now, you know baseball is my favorite sport, so we'll take a look at that. But but go ahead and give a follow. You don't want to miss anything. For game notes, news, highlights, and more from, La from Lions Nation, follow the Sagu Sports Network on Twitter and Facebook, on Instagram, basically any social media you can think of. Give us a follow. We're here. We want to provide you with highlights as much as we can, as well as breaking news. Final score again, the Sagu Lions 38 the Millsaps Majors 21. If you enjoyed today's broadcast, it was all because of our incredible student team. 90% of our crew, Tim, 90% at the Sagu Sports Network is made up of college students gaining experience as they prepare for their careers in live and broadcast production. I'm Adam Ferguson with my partner, Tim Roberts. Uh, Tim Roberts, And on behalf of our sideline reporter, Jazz Williams, our entire student-led crew headed up by producer James Lex and director John Cookman. So long from Waxahachie, Texas. And thank Thank you once again for watching the Sagu Sports Network.